The views expressed on the previous programs are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not reflect those I sure hope Eric Reed wasn't talking through his teeth again like spokesman. Or agencies. That would be bad. The biggest names, the best talent. This is Sports Radio 560, WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Joe Rogers, God. Yo! Coming live to a small club near you. It's America's most hated. That's right, y'all. I'm speaking about k Fan. Yo, yo, popo's out, popo's out. Yo, yo, this be k Fan, Kevin Federline, y'all. Yo, why ain't y'all haters been buying tickets to my shows? That's right, y'all. In case you didn't hear, because obviously y'all haven't heard, I'm taking the America's Most Hated Tour around the country. Now, in case y'all didn't know, I open with Popo Zhao and I close with it. And just for my diehard fans, I play it in the middle. And then, then again, I play it in the encore, too. So in the words of my Portuguese friends, Popo Zhao, Popo Zhao. In other words, girl, bring your ass. The following is a testimonial from an African-American man who's one of K-Fed's boys. Now, now, I'm playing for real. K-Fed got street cred. Now, n- n- not really, he does. Yo, just listen. Yo, yo. Come check out K-Fed. Nah, dog, that's K-Fed. Damn. Come check out K-Fed live in concert. He is one of my top dogs, and me and a lot of my other... Boys frequently hang out. Yo, dog, I am reading this. Shit. Yo, check out K Fed. Plenty of tickets still available. Good, good tickets. R- really good tickets. As a matter of fact, there's front row tickets left. Two for one. Yo, just meet me out front. The tickets are free, dog. Just check out K Fed live. So, like many have said for a long time, Britney's taste obviously is in her tush. It's a 10.02 at 560 WQM. Happy Thursday to you, November 16. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. So thanks to George yesterday. See, it's a good thing. It's fortuitous that I had a uh, trip to Woodbine because otherwise I would have changed the pool and I would have forgotten to put the engines. No, I didn't know. I had a little loss. Although yesterday, now there is something they do nice, which is very unusual. And that is that at holiday time, which is like uh, this time of the year, they like all the regular plungers, depending on how much you plunge your guts out, and they can tell that by tracking your card, uh, they give you a holiday gift. They gave me 500 bucks again this year. Wow. So that diminished my losings considerably yesterday, so it wasn't all that bad. But anyway, I'm changing the pool, because that was my bad, leaving Indians off the pool. And, of course, leave it to George. He knows his engines. I still got a lot of guilt about that. Yeah, because he used to be a... Engine killer. But anyway, so uh, they're leading the poll. We'll get to that one. Now, am I supposed to care about the story about the robber and clerk and the machete standoff? No, 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 stand-off? it's just the machete standoff, whatever. I don't I care. I just felt hey, like hey, Thanks, Larry, very much for the facts, but uh, I don't care. It's just boring story. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I read that's probably pretty boring, too, but not quite that boring. More bad news from Iraq. So Eric Reed was on this morning. Did he say guilty? That's right. Oh... You gotta stop uh, doing that, cro- that uh, switching over until about nine fifty nine thirty. I get so depressed. Geldy was on air then. Well, you talk about a, a audience killer, a showstopper. Panthers and the Canadians tonight. All the frogs will be there at the Mac Arena. The Montreal Canadiens and the uh, Panthers. I'd tell you at the uh, Washington game on Monday, if there were like eight people there, it was a lot. I think they just moved around a lot. Thirteen people were killed and nine wounded in various attacks in Iraq's capital this morning as the bloodshed. Uh, are they in a civil war? You think they're close to a civil war? Yeah. Uh-huh. You're a media man. They should only rot. In eastern Baghdad, gunmen opened fire on a bakery, killing nine and wounding two. One civilian was killed, another wounded in the same neighborhood when a roadside bomb detonated. Una bomba grande. In southwestern Baghdad, one civilian was killed, another wounded when a bomb strapped to a bicycle exploded. In central Baghdad, two civilians and uh, were killed, five wounded by a car bomb planted on the main road. Today's violence comes today after 17 people were killed in attacks around Baghdad. It's just uh, chaos is what it is. And we caused it. There's so much blood on America's hands now, it's like, a, like an ocean of blood, Ew. like a sea of blood. What did I do with the yesterday's poll result? I, just, I think I just tore it in half. That would be bad, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Somehow. So I guess what I do is I click on view previous, and there it is. Boy, thanks to you, Eric, man. That Eric, he's got it. He's got it laid out for us so easy there. Now, yesterday we were streaming, and it sounded really great, according to the audience. And one guy said, usually on the streaming online, it sounds like 
Like we're talking through a, a, a toilet paper roller? So I took, I ran out of toilet paper on the one roll this morning. And I what have an I answer have? for you on why it sounds better. Why does it sound so much better, John? George Corso told me yesterday that we have more bandwidth now. Woo! All, All right. right. Strike up right. the bandwidth. So in other words, it's going to sound that much better every day. You right. listen online. Crystal clear. As opposed to talking through a toilet Crispy paper roller like it usually sounds. Never did a show up. Maybe I'll do the whole show today. Talking through a toilet paper now, roll. Now if you could just get a tank of helium and that toilet paper roll. That would be really good. That would be special effects. Which religious group is the most malignant? That was yesterday's poll. We had 1,485 votes on that poll. 60, how many do we have? No, I don't know what we got. Oh, that was the day before we had 1,600 during the show. How could we have 1,600 when we had a total of 1,485? God, am I stupid or what? Yes. Old and stupid. Which religious group is the most malignant? The born-again Christians just kicked ass in this poll. 720. Nobody came close to you, born-again Christian fanatics. You losers, you nutjobs. You evildoers. 720, nearly half, 48.4%. Pick it on them poor born-again Christians. Muslims, 384. Scientologists, 121. Way out of proportion to their percentage of the population. That's amazing. Scientologists. If you see a, Scientolo a, a Scientologist on the street, just yell out, You fairy! Odds are you'll be spot on. I hate this poll, 107, 7.2%. Catholics, 80. They got off the hook, I thought, real easy in this one. And Orthodox Jews, 73. That was, uh, let's see, view previous, view current. There we go. Boy, that's uh, like magic. That is really like magic. Current poll, we already got 968 votes. 968, that's great. So I think our goal is 1,000. Throughout American history, which group has been treated the worst? Did we ever do this one? I don't think so. Oh, exactly. Probably. Oh, but probably. We've done them all. Probably, We've yeah. done them all. So I left Indians off of there, and George, luckily, thank God that George was right on top of this. He thought, oh, man, Indians had bows and arrows, but we man. had, the white man had guns, so. And disease, and we genocided them, and broke every treaty, but other than that. Yeah, but we smoked the old peace pipe yeah, with them. Herded them like would. cattle onto scrubby reservations. Indians, land. 406, treated badly. Blacks, 329. And then it's a, that, that's it. That's the only uh, yeah, battle much. going on. After that, it's way down to Jews, 72, gays, 49, women, 47. I hate this poll. Only 37, 3.8%. Well, I'm glad they like it. Gays should be in third. I mean, everybody's still messing with them. You know, in the American Dad episode you sent me, there's a great line in there. He said, gays are what blacks used to be in America. Oh, yeah, they're the new blacks. <laughs> yeah, they're the new blacks. It's okay to uh, treat them bad. Catholics, 15, and Mexicans, only 13. Oh, don't tell that to Lou Dobbs. He won't be too happy about that. All you Mexicans, turn around and go back where you came from immediately. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, uh, the special effects. The I like special it. effect is good. So, well, I, I figure that way. Uh, maybe <laughs> so, online will sound better than we do on the air. sounds like uh, that Clinton bit with Hillary in the background. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 yeah. Clinton's in Chappaqua, which I just played the other day. Yes, you're not going to you're not going to come into playing that. No, no, I'm just referring to my, it. My, my mind isn't that Referring bad to yet. It. Yes, it is. It's not that bad yet. They weren't paying too good yesterday, to be honest with you. And speaking of that, this headline tells you everything you need to know about South Florida and the so-called media. Man, you people at the Herald and the Sun Sentinel, you are an absolute joke. And nobody's laughing. That's the sad part. There's nothing worse than a joke when nobody laughs. It means it's a bad joke. The headline, the article is by John Bernstein, spelled or Burstein, and Jamie Mallerney. We got more bandwidth. That's why if you're listening online, we sound like so crystal queer. Oh, and speaking of Crystal Queer, we got Brady Quinn on uh, our MySpace page. We have 769 friends, by the way. 769. I'm sorry. He's on the website as well. 69. What? He's on the website as well. Oh, is he? Well, where do I find that? He's, he's not naked, but he's like shirtless and uh, much too. Oh, there he is. Wow. A very prominent picture right under the pool. There's Brady, the Notre Dame quarterback, number 10. I give him a 10. I give him about an 85 on a scale of one. Good God. Just a little bit too muscle bound for me. I don't think I could handle that. I'd give it a shot, though. Anyway, getting back to this and stop with that Brady Quinn stuff. You know, I've been watching him play for two seasons now. What is it that all of a sudden yesterday got me all whipped up about him? Maybe I'm just extra horny or something like that. Maybe it's the time of the year. Maybe I would like a belated birthday present and find him in my bed tonight. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, so the headline says in the Sun Sentinel, hundreds hit Gulfstream Park Casino and love it even as they lose. You know, this is just, it's so typical. And I realize that the uh, people who wrote the article don't write the headline. It's some separate jackass. But that's just exactly what you'd expect from the Herald and the Sun Sentinel. Those evil one-armed bandits, they're extracting the money from you. Uh, yeah, so 
Anybody that goes to a casino expecting to win is an idiot. I mean, you know, there's a chance you might get lucky and win, like Josh's friend at 1 to 10 grand, who's a real putz because he didn't share. He should have given you half. If he was a real friend, he'd have said, Here, here's a grand anyway. Listen, Wouldn't you think? Listen, he got a room and paid for drinks that night. He didn't have to give me any money. That's good enough. He got a room for you guys? Well, they gave him a room because he won. And you shared it with him. <laughs> anyway, getting back to this. Always Look, back to that, you got the shovel out today. Oh, and the good news is Josh saw the movie last night. He watched Match Point. And? It was fantastic, actually. Told you. I was surprised at how good it was. And the ending was sensational. We're not yeah. going to ruin it for anybody because then you won't want to go see it. Right. But uh, Scarlett Johansson is in there looking mm. just as pristine and clean oh. and uh, fine as can be. And uh, John, uh, Jonathan Rhys Meyers is looking a little bit fade to me, but then again, he's British. But uh, the acting is excellent, and Woody Allen did a phenomenal job. You know, I don't like him, but I'll be... See, one thing about me, I'm fair. Right. Even if it's somebody I can't stand, if they come out with something really good, I'll tell you. Every once in a while. Well, then like, if Domino, if, like if Domino's ever came out with a good pizza, we'd tell you about it. Anyway, you were, you were brutal yesterday, the thing about that Brooklyn it, pizza. It's, it's you were the just worst brutal. Brutally honest, ever though. made. Okay. She stood in front of the $5. I don't have time to do this before, because I want to I go through this whole thing. Because it just... It's it's like something revolutionary happened in Florida yesterday. Like uh, how many how many years? It's got to be like what fifty years, sixty years. They've been like running the slot machines in Vegas, even the old fashioned ones, you know, mm -hmm. with the cherries and the fruits. A lot of fruits in Vegas. But at any rate, uh, I mean, like something new and revolutionary happened. Oh, can you believe it? Slot machines in Florida, and the fat ass governor is probably squeezing his kneecaps. He's so upset about it. He's probably having wild, explosive diarrhea off there in Tallahassee. Wouldn't surprise me if that whole city got swept away in a big sea of wild. Uh... The biggest names, the best you talent. Heard the Red this sea? is Neil Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. All the crap you can unwrap, all the slime, all the time. Goodbye, Rumsfeld, drop dead and burn in hell. And it's much too late to confess that Iraq was just for oil. We hope you die of festering boils. Absolutely. You know you're pretty stinking old, but evil never dies. So how about a nice refreshing dunk on the water board that your pals at Blackwater asked for? And there were many unknowns, and knowns you didn't know, that mostly were unknowns. Go tell the Germans about your plans for concentration camps. Your Pentagon press agency has met its end. Just like Bush on down, you're a failure and disgrace, and a harbinger of day. I'm dying over here. Excellent news. 1017 at 560. Now, I don't want to uh, get a little bit too carried away here, but I did notice something, and maybe both of you can help me out on this, since you can look at it more objectively than I can, being the old fag that I am. You know this picture that we have here of a Brady Quinn shirtless on our website? Yes, you do. Okay. George, are you looking at it? No, I haven't. Well, I look have at yet it. to. I'll just, go there uh, now. Just clench your teeth and look at it. I'm looking there, Josh, below the navel. I don't see any pubic here. That picture goes way down almost to his uh, the navel. privates. And uh, I, don't, I don't see any pubic hair there. Don't tell me Brady Quinn shaves his uh, crotch. That sounds awfully gay. You know what I'm saying? Am I wrong? I don't know. I, uh, it, it's going to take a while for me to get there. Mine's loading for, now. For you to get where? I see. For me to be able to look at the picture. Well, why is that? Very slow connection here. <laughs> I, I got it here. I don't want to. I don't want to shock you. Yes, being the old timer that you are, but it's for, for a long time now. Clean shaven has become the um, among jocks and people who work out. And, uh, you know this. Get out of here! All right, that sounds awfully gay to me. Yeah, likewise. But nevertheless, he's got. I, no I will second that, though. Listen, uh, there's no chest hair on a man his age. There should be chest hair. So obviously, he's shaving and where the razor stops. No, no, no. I no. don't know. No, don't tell me this on a man his age. He's like 22 or three years old. That's what there I'm saying. There are a lot of guys that don't have any chest hair. There are guys who are 30 don't have any chest hair. What do you mean by that? If they're Same 30 thing. and they don't have any chest hair and they're a white guy, then they're shaving. He's 22 like years old. Asians sometimes don't have chest hairs. And, you know, and the engines a lot of times he's don't have chest hairs. He's smooth and clean. At but any rate, we don't want to get the bogged down that. This Although man is shaving. Maybe he had laser hair removal. Laser that surgery. Could be it. 
Or maybe he like uses near or neat or something yeah. like that. Maybe he smears that on. That sounds really gay. Yeah. Anyway, maybe he's a ne'er do well. I don't think so. Last night, th- this this is the worst story I have ever seen, read, uh, had the misfortune, of, and it's very short and sweet and right to the point and grotesque. Grotesque. Uh huh. Speaking of Larry King. Last night, CNN's Larry King confessed to Roseanne Barr that he's never used the Internet. King expressed doubt that the Internet was a viable political medium because there's 80 billion things on it. When Barr said she liked the Internet, King acknowledged, I've never done it, never gone searching. He says, do you punch little buttons and things? (laughs) Barr said King would love the Internet if he tried it. King replied, I wouldn't love it. What do you punch little buttons? But Barr even offered to show him how to use it. King declined. He declined to use it. And it's got the, uh, this is on Think Progress. You can actually uh-huh. watch it. Oh. What do you want from a diaper-wearing fossil? God, with a, with a bag. Mm-hmm. It's in the bag, Larry. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Good God. These people that uh, want to live in the Stone Age and, uh, you know, Whatever. it's just... I have no respect for that. It makes me nauseous. <laughs> People are all, I don't have a computer, and I don't read the that. Other lazy, man, lazy. Anyway, getting back to this story about hundreds hit Gulfstream Park Casino and love it even as they lose. So you're telling me that Brady Quinn shaves his privates, huh? No, that's not what I'm saying, but I wouldn't be surprised. No. Oh. It's all well, the rage. What's the purpose of that? <laughs> you want this one, Josh? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot Remember of. Remember when you were giving uh, Joe Castello a hard time over the uh, the shaving, yeah, his shaving nuts his thing? Nuts, that, yeah. Well, it's fairly standard anymore for the people. Get who, out of here! A lot of women, a lot of women like it like that these days. Dollars in her pocket, ready to gamble. Gulfstream Park Racing Casino had been open for 30 minutes. About 30 minutes. And she had just won 215 dollars on a single spin. Wednesday was Jean Barker's 54th birthday. She celebrated it by becoming one of the first people in the state to play Las Vegas-style slot machines. She had a decent machine, man. Maybe. This is a birthday present for myself, she said, over the chaotic, relentless symphony of clangs, beeps, and whirs created by more than 400 people feeding the machines money. Within a half hour of the casino's opening, people had parked themselves in front of more than 80% of the 516 machines. That's pretty weak. I wouldn't have thought there would have been an open machine, would you, on opening day? In this town? Yeah, it'll take a while. Hundreds of people, largely retirees, flocked to the Hallandale Beach Racetrack Casino to try their luck. It was the day South Florida's paramutual industry had long forced it seeks to revive its flagging fortunes in the face of the lottery, casino ships, and most of all, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, those engines. For the next few weeks at least, Gulfstream Park has a monopoly on the state for the Class 3 gambling devices like those found in Vegas and Atlantic City, and it would bind in every, uh, every racetrack in Ontario, eh? And in a lot of other places, too, by the way. Of course, uh, you know, this is the Sun Sentinel. Mardi Gras hopes to open its slots room next month. Pompano Park is shooting for early 2007. And Dania Highlights Casino is tentatively set to start in 2008. They're a little late, 2008. The Seminole Tribe currently has Class 2 slots, bingo-style machines, at its seven Florida casinos, but it's pushing to get the Class 3 machines to Mon. They want the real machines, not just air zots, not phony baloney. Gulfstream Park opened its casino with no promotional campaign, gave only 17 hours' notice. Two hours before the noon opening, plastic still hung over the casino sign. Only one person waited to get into the slots room. Two hours before. I thought maybe there'd be a big crowd, said Ed Dykeman, 60, a Davy air conditioning contractor. Maybe it's still too early. It was. By 11.55, more than 210 people waited in line, among them Doris Keep, 66, of Davy, who left the Seminole Hard Rock Wednesday morning to play the Gulfstream slots. If they loosen them screws up on those machines a little bit where I can put a little money in my pocket, they'll get a regular customer, keeps it. Loosen the screws up. Slots are addicting. They're hypnotizing. The machines will hypnotize you. And you know something that's very perspicacious, Doris? You are absolutely correct. They are hypnotizing. Remember I used to tell you about the spin mm-hmm. symbol on the Wheel of Fortune? It, it, it's hypnotic. It is. Keep said she loves to play the slots once, playing them for 36 hours straight at the Seminole Hard Rock. Like I said, Doris, get some help. I worked all my life. She said, I worked for Ford Motor Company for 30 years. About 30, man. It's my time now. If I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. You don't have many years to go when you're my age, she said. Oh, she's uh, how old? 66. Oh, she's right. Moments before the public was allowed inside, Gulfstream Park let State Senator Steve Geller, Hallandale Beach Mayor Joy Cooper, and Vice Mayor William Julian be the first to take a spin. Geller and Julian each fed a dollar bill into a five-cent Lucky Lemmings machines, while Cooper put a dollar into a five-cent Super Jackpot Party machine. Oh, they were playing the... Five-cent machines, big spenders, baby. All right. 
They pressed their buttons simultaneously. Each seemed a little confused about the, how the slots worked and how many credits they had. Oh, they, these, must, these are those digital machines, ones that are like, uh, you can play up to like 45 credits a spin, and you think you're playing like only, yeah. Uh, they played a few times before cashing out. Cooper and Julian ended up losing 75 cents, while Geller won 25 cents. Oh! All right. You go, Steve. Geller, Democrat of Hallandale Beach, touted yesterday is a great day for Florida schools. Some revenue from the machines will go to public schools. The state has projected slots for generating $209 million annually for education once each peer mutualized the maximum number of machines allowed by state law, 1,500. State regulators in the FDLE reported no problems yesterday. Oh, the sky didn't come uh, crashing down and the world didn't come to an end. And the mafia wasn't there grabbing everybody's money. The department was watching for slot cheats who think they might test Gulfstream Park early, said Assistant Special Agent in Charge <laughs> Michael Mann, who oversees the gaming enforcement team. We'd like to establish ourselves quick, he said. All right. People continued to flow into the casino well into the afternoon early evening. Gulfstream Park President Paul Macucci, Cucci Cucci Coo, estimated that a 1,000 people an hour were filtering through the slots room. There's no way to verify those numbers. See, they have to put that in there. No, but he says a 1,000 an hour, but, of course, the Sun Sentinel's skeptical. Just after 5 p.m., Bernie Marabona, 37 of Sunny Isles Beach, sat back in a chair playing two slot machines at once, betting a $10, $10 a spin every few seconds on each hand until $250 was quickly depleted. He estimated uh, been up to 550 bucks at one point, but overall lost a total of 600 since 2.30 p.m. His wife, Barbie, said she lost 700 Yet both were grinning ear to ear. We leave it in all in machines. We don't worry about taking it home, said Bernie Marabona, real estate developer. It's entertainment. You're paying for the entertainment. Kathy Lissiter of North Miami Beach was less pleased. She said she dropped about 2500 bucks by 5 p.m., but got none of the VIP treatment she's used to at the Seminole Hard Rock. VIP my ass. I've been here since they opened, and not one person came up to me to say, How are you? Do you need anything? <laughs> oh, Kathy, are you a funny lady? At Hard Rock, I don't pay for anything. They give me free rooms, free tickets. Yeah. And what happened to the woman who marked her birthday playing the slots? Bark. For a, a cock and bull story, mm, huh? Cute. A what now? Oh, wow. 1,066 votes on the poll, and the engines are running away with it. Well, actually, the blacks are right on their ass. They better watch it. I think the blacks have got guns. Watch it. Used to be white guys with guns, and now it's uh, black folks with guns. And the poor engines still got their bows and arrows. But they got those uh, cancer sticks, though, the ones with the worms yeah, in them. Yeah, and the casinos, if they get their way. 1027 at QAM. The biggest names, the best talent. This is Neil Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. Shack, 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 with a big track to do, remove my cubic hair. I'm shaving my nuts, squat on a mirror to view my hairy sagging hair. My girlfriend wants me to have no hair. She wants some smooth and clean when she's down there. If I want to get some, I've got to shave my nuts. I'm shaving my nuts. Like the squirrel, she holds them in a place that voice. I'm shaving my nuts, cause she can get real cold, so I really have no choice. If I want to get laid, bye bye girl, I have to pay the way through the head for her tongue to swell. If I want to get some, I gotta shave my nuts. Yeah, likely story. That that takes us back to the days when Joe Costello was giving us all a primer on how to be a real man. You know, That's right. And, uh, and, and I piled right on from, just like everybody right from, else. Uh, back to front and do all these other uh, half ass things. That's right. I had my things to say at the time, but uh, turns out he was more in touch with what's going on out there than uh, than some of us. Wow, that's not what his ex-wife says. 1088, 1,088 votes on the poll already. My God, we're going to have 11 by 11. Aren't you excited about that? He asked, and as usual, George said, who the hell cares? Huh? Democratic strategist James Carville, a bald-headed geek, says his party should dump Howard Dean as chairman of the Democratic Party because of incompetence. <laughs> Carville, during coffee and rolls with political reporters yesterday, said Democrats could have picked up as many as 50 House seats instead of the nearly 30. About 30 
man. They have so far. There's still like uh, still a few of them that are like uh, up for grabs. They're grabbing it. The reason they didn't, he said, is the Democratic National Committee didn't spend some six million dollars it could have put into so-called third-tier House races against vulnerable Republicans. Carville said the other Democratic campaign committees had borrowed to the hilt. He said he tried to meet with Dean to argue for additional spending for Democrats in the final days of the campaign, but Dean declined and gave no reason why. Asked by a reporter whether Dean should be dumped, Carville replied, In a word, do I think? Yes. I think that all those years of uh, hanky-panky with Mary Madeline there, that right-wing bitch, I think uh, it's affecting James Carville's mind. I still don't, uh, I don't buy that. What? That relationship. Well, I don't care whether you buy I, it I think or it's whether a they're selling it. I couldn't care less because yeah. between the two of them, uh-huh. I'd rather worry about Brady Crin's uh, shaved crotch. He added, I think he should be held accountable. I would describe his leadership as Rumsfeldian in its competence. Carville likened the Democratic takeover of Congress to the Civil War Battle of Gettysburg, which the Union Army won but failed to pursue the Confederate Army when it retreated. We should have chased him down, Carville said. There was no immediate response from Dean or the DN. See? 1,091 votes on the poll. We're on the verge. We're going to have a big day on that poll. Big, huge, humongous. Humongous, huge. See, if you're going to try to give me a song and a dance about how, um, you know, Straight guys all have their well. Maybe uh, what do I know about that? You know. So you keep saying things like "all." Oh, there's a there's a demographic. Yeah. It's like young active guys who are dating young active women don't have hairy crotches anymore. Well, in, in America, I'm, I'm glad that you've done that study. Thanks for sharing. No problem. Clear Channel Communications Inc. This is uh, the follow up, and I'm sure everybody's been following this very closely. They've had their nose right inside the radio. Clear Channel, Inc., the number one U.S. radio company, has agreed to be acquired by private equity firm Thomas H. Lee Partners and Bain Capital for nearly $19 billion. Oh, my God. A source familiar with the situation said today. The bid value is Clear Channel, which has about 1,150 radio stations, all of them suck, by the way. At $37.60 a share, the source said, Clear Channel shares rose 4.5% to 35.67 in electronic composite trading after closing at 34 bucks on the New York Stock Exchange yesterday. An announcement is expected from the company later today. Two teams of bidders submitted offers for the company, sources previously told Reuters. The other consortium was made up of Providence Equity Partners, Blackstone Group, and Kohlberg Kravis Roberts. Clear Channel is mum. They declined to comment. Clear Channel, which owns a majority stake in outdoor advertising group, Clear Channel Outdoor Holdings, Inc., said last month it was evaluating strategic alternatives for its business. It hired investment bank Goldman Sachs to advise it. And the first thing that the new owners will do is uh, fire Pete Poulter. That'll be the number one order of business. Yeah. Fire his ass. Ain't going to happen. Well, it should happen. He's like a cockroach. Yeah, I'll agree with part of that. The roach part. Oh, not the caca part? Yeah, he's caca, man. All right. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he was in Virginia. They'd call him Macaca Jr. Throughout American history, which group has been treated the worst? We have 1,102 votes already, 1,102, and it's only 1036. All the numbers, all the time. In fact, let's start interspersing. QAM Sports Time. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I love this thing. I love my toilet paper rolls. Almost as exciting as um, when you had your big uh, debut there. Where the hell is that? Oh, no. Don't tell me I don't have it. What'd you lose? What's that called? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought it's called Purple Haze. Oh, poiple veins. Poiple. Oh, poi- P- P-O-I. Poiple. Yeah, poiple. It ain't spelled uh, poiple. That's how Brian spelled it. So well, I got news for you. It ain't poiple in my DCS. Where the hell did you find it? Oh, it's in here because I play it all the time. Of course. Well, what the hell is it under? Uh, MHD dash poiple. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, it wasn't even worth it. Well, that's uh, George, by the way, on the uh, comb. That's right. That's my musical... Uh, well, you don't need a comb if finale. you don't have no pubic hair to comb. Well, that's not where I'm using the comb. Throughout American history, which group has been treated worse? 1102. Indians, 456. Those poor-ass Indians. Blacks, 380. Jews, 84. Gays, only 56. Women, 53. Well, of course, how can you treat gays bad? Because they've been in the closet all the time. So. Right. When they come out, they get treated bad. Women, 53. I hate this poll. Only 42, and we are 3.8%. Catholic 16, the Mexicans 15, and uh, jocks who don't shave their pubic hair. We'll be putting that on later. 
Well, that yeah. is a real fly opener. By the way, me, shave, shave is not necessarily the right word. Groom might be more appropriate. Cause groom? Di- different levels of grooming. Some people shave. Like some a, people just little, trim. I was going to say groom with a broom, but maybe right. with a Swiffer duster. Some people just use the clippers, etc., and so on. There's different levels. Hey, Brady, is that a Swiffer duster in your pants, or are you just excited to see uh, the opposition? I got news for you, man. He's uh, shaving it. And this business about... You're so out of touch with reality. This business about a guy his age who's got a hairless body. A must I'm out of it. touch. You're out of touch. He how many, shaves how his ma- chest. Let me ask you this. How many young naked men, do you, who's seen more of me or you? Listen. He I'm listening. shaves his chest. You notice how he doesn't want to answer the question, uh, Josh? None. He shaves his chest. No. See, I don't have to see a lot of guys to know that men grow chest hair unless they're Asian or Indian. Wrong. All right. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely, positively wrong. There's a lot of young guys who don't have any hair in Brady their chest. Brady Quinn shaves his chest. Yeah. At least. And his nuts. Who knows? You, you get back to me on that one. <laughs> oh. One thing about George, even when he's wrong, boy, he is a hard ass. Mm-hmm. He's I'm militant not wrong. and just uh, stubborn. I don't think you're stubborn as active as you, uh, as you pretend to be. wife hates you like poison and is trying to poison your uh, lime no, jello. I don't think whatever. you're getting all the action you claim to be uh, getting. Yeah, okay, whatever you're saying. Uh-huh. 21 before 11 at 560 WQM, your hairy station for the new millennium. Not anymore. We used to be, but now we're shaving it. That's right. Maybe they're gonna sh- uh, there'll be some chocolate shavings in your ice cream tomorrow. We can only hope. Mm. Jackson's is going to be at the station again tomorrow with big tubs of ice cream for Josh and uh, maybe for George, although he's starting to get on my nerves. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and they're also going to bring some of them uh, National Deli footlongs, too. Mm-hmm. The legendary uh, Jackson's Ice Cream Parlor in Dania Beach is celebrating their 50th anniversary. They're one of the few. They're one of the few businesses or people or anything around that's been around in South Florida longer than I have. Being the old toad that I am, that's what I've been told. Oh my God, your breasts are beautiful. Hello, friends. I am the Reverend Ted Haggard, former president of the National Association of Evangelicals. I have taken uh, early uh, retirement from that fine organization to pursue another calling. Not a higher calling, really, more of a lower calling. Much, much lower. And even though President Bush won't return my calls anymore, and I've been kicked out of my church, I found a new home, a new home on television. Beginning next Sunday, the Bravo Network will premiere my series, Queer Eye on the Preacher Guy. On the premiere episode, my special guest will be Neil Patrick Harris. And wasn't he cute when he was that little Doogie Hauser MD? Neil and I will discuss several important topics, uh, including when is a massage more than a massage? Saddam Hussein, evil man, but really hot in those boxer shorts. And we'll review the new Clay Aiken CD. Then, in the sports segment of my show... We'll open play in the Reverend Ted Haggard Cornhole Tournament. That's Queer Eye on the Preacher Guy with me, the Reverend Ted Haggard, Sundays on Bravo. It'll be so much fun, you'll think you just snorted meth with a male escort. 1045 at 560 WQM. We got Mad Dog at 2. We got that big power hour between 4 and 5 with the Mad Dog and the Humper, Hank, who's uh, yet to use the Internet. Then we got the Humper solo between 5 and 7. Panther preview at 7 o'clock. Panthers and the Montreal Canadiens at the Macarena at 7.30, followed by the Eddie K. Show from Las Vegas. Oh! Now, it would seem to me that being the evolutionary kind of guy that you are, that you'd understand, and with all due respect to the pissed-off caveman in the Geico spots, mm-hmm. you'd understand that uh, as years go by, man is becoming less and less hairy. He doesn't need the hair to protect him Absolutely. from the elements. Absolutely, losing our wisdom what, teeth, etc. That is so correct. So right. maybe in 100 or 200 years, uh, all yeah, we'll men all be will hairless. be like hairless. That's correct. Right. So okay. as a result of that, more and more young men don't have any hair. October 27th, by the way, was Brady Quinn's 27th birthday, for those who are keeping track. 22nd. So 23rd. Eric, being Says, the, uh, the Shylock Holmes that he is, he uh, yeah. writes in the little chat box here, Google Brady Quinn shaves and see what you get. And my computer oh, no. almost blew up. Because apparently he does lots of it. And he doesn't stop at his chest. So I'll let you do that here. research. All these articles came up about the... Uh, all the shaving that Brady Quinn shaves does. his arms and legs. Blogs and yeah. Well, oh, that sounds very. Gay. I'm yeah, sorry. Well, and I and you know something I can't stand. That. By the way, and I'm not going to disagree Ooh. with you, but I understand yes. from the athletes, and you know that they're all straight, that that's common in the athletic world. What is that? Shaving I, I your arms and legs? Shaving everything. Yeah. 
because how about your because rectum? The, the rationale yeah. being, as as they explain it, because you know they have to they have to tape their legs, they have to put things on themselves like Ben Gay and. They don't uh, tape their arms. What, what are you well, talking whatever. about? Whatever. I'm like I know. This is what they said. And they sure as hell don't be taping their. I don't think. How do you know? Well, maybe they are. Maybe so they wrap anyway. a bunch of protective tape around it. It's Here's not just a fact. Swimmers says, Internet streaming is breaking up and is unlistenable. Said, uh, tell Neil, please, to correct it. Maybe they're tweaking it again. I don't know. Well, let me take a look at that. I don't see any uh, dropouts on there, so whoever sent that is just a, yeah. a troublemaker. Oh, and this morning there was a fax from Amy saying that the archives were screwed up. The fax is to Josh, but Josh doesn't have anything to do with the archives. And, Amy, the archives are only as good as uh, as they are recorded based on the feed that day, so there's nothing we can do too about it. Too many them. complaints. Yeah, but You're now complaining they, uh, too much, folks. The price is right. We're going to start charging if you don't stop bitching so much. The archives are going to be in the better quality now. So well, there you go, you're Amy. Tell, you're from you're New York. telling me that we got better quality because we got more bandwidth, and now we get the first facts. We get internet streaming is breaking up and is unlistenable. It's even worse than it sounded like it was uh, through a toilet paper roll. But anyway, here's one. If huh? It says it's odd when he's prettier than the when the brother is prettier than the sister, and I mean prettier, not better looking. I have no problem saying he's pretty damn good looking man. I've established this. This is from somebody allegedly uh, heterosexual, no doubt. It says, I mean, Brady Quinn is pretty, too pretty. He looks very wise in the ways of exfoliants and well-versed in manicures and pedicure, pedicures. Maybe he's while just his, metrosexual. While his sister looks like a horse, it says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now i got to see Woo. his sister. What's her name? Secondly, after the one Notre Dame game I watched this year, Brady was congratulating his roommate slash teammate, some African dude with a name I can't remember, and swear it looked like they were going in for a kiss before they realized TV cameras in the eyes of the fans were on him. Right. Boy, talk, I, I thought I had a wild imagination. This is really something. Now, where's, oh, then they reported during one Notre Dame game that Brady Quinn shaves his arms and legs. So he's very, very pretty. Looked like he has a unique relationship with his roommate and shaves his arms and legs. So you, what, what you ask? And this past week he did an interview for a gay magazine with an openly gay writer and photographer with some way gay pictures. Wow. Way gay? Way gay. <laughs> no way. Way. <laughs> So yeah. there you go. Who the hell cares? I mean, yeah, it's all such, such cockerai. 1,152 votes, so to speak, on the poll. So you're, you, know, you just don't get it. Right. right. I, would say, I would say maybe not a majority, but uh, probably close to 50-50. Young guys like, uh, maybe like from 18 to 25 are pretty much hairless from uh, the naval up. Sure, whatever you say. They are. I'm telling you right now, okay. mister. Okay. You don't, know, you don't know your men, nope. okay? Just nope. stick to stuff you know about. Okay. Stick to women with hairy chest. Okay. Okay. Women with little corncob beards. Sure. Republican Senator John McCain is creating a presidential... Uh, I think you spent too much time with your buddy JP there. Uh, That's Pablo right. Juan Pablo. That's where that hairy thing came from. Mm -hmm. That's it. He had a hairy thing. Republican Senator John McCain is creating a presidential exploratory committee, the first formal step toward a possible 2008 White House bid. What a surprise. Huh? What a shock. Joining Rudy Giuliani, Representative Duncan Hunter, and, like I told you just before the show this morning, I nearly fell off the seat when I seen it. Former Wisconsin Governor of the Cheesehead, Tommy Thompson, who says he's surprised they haven't poisoned our food supply yet because it's so easy. The Cheesehead, who said he drank water from a creek. He was an outdoorsy kind of guy uh, back during the uh, anthrax business. During the next couple of months, I'll be talking with my family, friends, and supporters about whether to officially announce a run for president. McCain said a statement posted yesterday on the Exploratory Committee's new website. I guarantee he don't shave his ass. Prior to that decision, the formation of this committee is the first legal step in that process, he said. This business about guys that shave their arms and their legs and their body, and their, uh, that, their that's, uh, I don't, and their you, you can their try tits. to uh, convince me. It sounds very gay to me. I'm not arguing with you. And then the worst part about that is, and I have encountered people like that, and the problem is because if you do are naturally hairy and then it starts growing, it's like stubble. You know, There's nothing worse than like stubble. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. When you stumble on the stubble? Absolutely. It's not good. No. Trying to fool Mother Nature. Be whatever you are, okay? Don't be afraid to be whatever you are, even if it's gross and hairy and nasty. You know what story has got the most reads from yesterday's website? And uh, luckily, so is it today's. Maybe it's today's website. Today's news. Oh, yeah, it's today's. The Fox News internal memo, which they discussed. got almost 200 reads already, and it's not even 11 o'clock yet. That is pretty impressive. We're starting to make a comeback on the website. How's the Internet streaming coming? Any more uh, feedback? Nothing new. How about some feedback like this? There you go. Oh, or generate some feedback Woo! like that. How's that? We both feedback. Well, I want to get a little feedback. 
Oh, and guess what that is? You know something? That couldn't happen again in a million years. I remember the, reading that memo about we're having a fire alarm. Let me close the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have yeah, your attention, please. Wop, 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 wop. Anyway, I feel like <laughs> Bubba at Chappaqua. So uh, that couldn't happen again in a million years, could it? That feedback was almost like simultaneous with that first beep from the fire alarm test. Last night, and I did see it because I watched Keith Olbermann if I'm in the house and there's not like some important hockey game on, I'll send it in the house. The memo said it had been written by Fox's senior vice president, the unctuous John Moody, not related to the John Moody who drives at Hazel Park, advises the staffers to be on the lookout for any statements from the Iraqi insurgents who must be that the network is biased against Democrats rather than fair and balanced as advertised. Of course, Keith, as much as we like you a hell of a lot and you do a wonderful job and you got a big pair, the fact of the matter is anybody who really believes that Fox is fair <laughs> and balanced is uh, unbalanced. You've got to be a crazy person. You know what I mean? I think you what do you mean? That was uh, kind of shocking the way that all worked out with that fire alarm and then that uh, the feedback. That was, it was like uh, like a segue, like a talk up. You, can you hear it out there? I've got the door closed, but can you hear it? A little bit. Oh, way in the back, way in the because I can barely hear it. Eleven hundred and sixty votes. There's the uh, uh, supercilious Nancy Pelosi there. Oh my God, what do we need her for? You know, just just go away, Nancy. Speaking of Nancy and her boyfriend Jack Murtha. Congressman John Murtha reportedly called a Democratic bill on lobbying and ethics reform total crap two days before the House Majority Leader election during a vote-bidding presentation before the Blue Dog Coalition. Oh, the Blue Dog Coalition. You ever have a blue dog? No. Put it in the freezer for a while. You will. I've had a purple vein. Representative John Murtha told a group of Democratic moderates on Tuesday that an ethics and lobbying reform bill being pushed by party leaders was total crap, but said that he would work to enact the legislation because Speaker-to-be Nancy Pelosi supports it. John Bresnahan reports for roll call. Murtha has been accused of abusing his positions as ranking a member of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, the House Appropriations Committee, to benefit lobbying clients of his brother, and a liberal-leaning watchdog group blasted incoming Speaker Pelosi for endorsing him. In September, Crew compiled a list of lawmakers that it designated as the 20 most corrupt members of Congress at its Beyond Delay website. Murtha was given a dishonorable mention by the group for being involved in a number of pay-to-play schemes involving former staffers and his brother, Robert Kit Murtha. Eight incumbents in Cruz's report lost their races to ethics issues, notes Cruz's press release. Future House Speaker Pelosi's endorsement of Murtha, one of the most unethical members of Congress, shows that she may have prioritized ethics reform merely to win votes with no real commitment to changing the culture of corruption, Cruz Executive Director Melanie Sloan be saying yesterday. How do you like that? All right. One of these facts is here. Oh, here's one about James Carville. Uh, I don't care about James Carville. Oh, the, okay, the last paragraph is the important part. Right, about uh, George is absolutely right. All white men, even hairless like me, have some hair, however light. Some strands coming out of nipples, a few in the middle of the chest. Furthermore, I have a 23-year-old son who shaves down there because everyone does now, girls and boys. I don't care for it, but what do I know? I'm a 59-year-old old fart like you. Uh, oh, I see. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not reading the last sentence. Right. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Oh, my God. See, the thing is, is that, you know, I'll, I will grant you this, that you see way more guys without their shirts off than I do, even though that I'm, is correct. I'm at the beach almost every weekend. That or whatever. is correct. But we straight guys, first of all, we talk to each other, and more importantly, we talk to girls and what they're encountering and what they would like to see more yeah. of or less of, et cetera, and so, so in other on. words, they like hairy guys? Is that what you're saying? Maybe that's no, why they like Ron they Jeremy don't. so much. They don't. Maybe that's why when they Ron don't. Jeremy came in the building with Al Goldstein, they, they, they were all oogling and, huh, it's Ron Jeremy. That's because he was Ron Jeremy, but oh. they don't. They no, don't like do hair. Girls don't, don't like, like hair. So keep anyway. shaving it, uh, Brady. Keep shaving it. Like uh, Tom Brady, for example, he's a hairy guy. And like I said the other day, from the chin down, he ain't nothing. You know, and let's just put his head on Brady Quinn's body. It's Mr. Potato Head. Right. We're going like, to start mixing and I'll matching. Send you taking, a saw. taking really hot people's heads and putting them on hot people's bodies. And then we're going to have something really so hot you can't even touch it. You singe your fingers just by uh, thinking about touching which goes to show you we all have way too much time on our hands. 10.57 at QM. Attention, men. That's what Duff always says. I want to give men. you a kiss. If you have a hair loss problem or you currently wear a hair system, listen to this. For more than 40 years, Chuck Alfieri has been designing hair systems for show business people, politicians, jocks, and more importantly, everyday guys, schleppers just like you. Now, people say they can always spot a hair system. Those are the bad ones that you see, and you just fall down on the floor. You're laughing when you do, see do, one do, do, do. How many good hair systems go unnoticed? They look like the real thing. 
Chuck Alfieri's hair systems are completely natural, designed with just the right amount of hair and proper recessions. Run your hands through it, baby. It looks and feels just like your own hair, like the real thing. And for just $99, they'll custom design a hair system for you. And here's how the deal works. You try it for a couple of weeks. If you're not happy with the way it looks and feels and smells, if people aren't pawing and clawing at you like crazy, it's yours for just an additional 500 bucks. They're so confident that if you're not completely happy, return it, get your $99 back. So you have nothing to lose but that ugly bald spot that makes you look about 30, 40 years older than you really are. There's an offer you can't refuse. Charles Alfieri in Fort Lauderdale, like I said, he's been doing it for guys for over 40 years now, and so have I, as a matter of fact. Call 1-800-321-2413 right now for an appointment. That's 1-800-321-2413. You won't believe how much better and how much younger you're going to look. The biggest names, the best talent. This is Neil Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> this is your brain. <laughs> Any questions? To Phil Farkley, honesty and dependability are more than just words. They're nouns. Phil's appearance on Springer a few years ago with Chartreuse, his former gay lover, may have raised a few plucked eyebrows. But seriously, have you seen the ass on that biatch? It proved that Phil wants to keep sex education out of our kids' schools and put it back on TV where it belongs. Phil has freely admitted pocketing money earmarked for orphans, and that kind of honesty is hard to find in politicians. His stand on the environment has never wavered until the timber industry made a bigger contribution. Unlike his opponent, Phil Farkley knows a strong economy means supporting your right to work. And Phil supports the American workers and their union bosses because he needs the money these overpriced and underworked slackers bring in by the truckload. Phil knows that NAFTA is creating new jobs. Sure, they're in Mexico, but a job's a job, even at four pesos an hour. Phil Farkley is against raising your taxes. Unlike Unless he really needs the cash. And ever since that unfortunate incident last week when his crack pipe exploded, Phil has adopted a zero-tolerance, get-tough policy toward the manufacture and sale of such faulty equipment. This November, vote for and elect Phil Farkley. Paid for by the committee to bail out Phil Farkley, misdemeanor chairperson. It's 1102 at 560 WQM. Happy Thursday to you. Don't forget that Panther game tonight against the Canadians. Any interest? No. At the okay. Macarena. We need to make Here's a special announcement before you go on. Yes. Because we're getting flooded with faxes and emails and, yes. and phone calls about the Internet feed, which obviously there's something wrong with it. Wow. Uh, just what, just when we thought we got They're sucked in yesterday with the idea that we got uh, right. more bandwidth, so it's going to sound really great. They're and out of we got all it, kinds of problems. Told, the Internet feed is all screwed up, and, uh, and they're working on it, so there you go. Isn't that great? Isn't that a real kick in the ass? At any rate, here's a. Uh, if you look at these fag websites, Brady Quinn is all over them. I can't imagine why. But nevertheless, here's one called the Hugh Johnson Project. Mm -hmm, that's my name. And the one guy has a uh, entry on here. It says, "Did NBC just say that Brady Quinn shaves his whole body? He's more woman than his transsexual brother." It says. <laughs> well, I don't. Yeah, you know, enough of that. Because one thing that's about you, line. you're just uh, you're about impossible. Me. I'm impossible. You're impossible. Josh, I'm just would you, you, would there you are tell me what you told me during no the break? Hair on their bodies, okay? I'm just telling you that right now. That's not the I, point. You always change the he... argument. What when is you, it? When you lose an argument, you change what it was about. What was it about? All the young guys groom. If they're active and they're dating, they're grooming. Yeah, well, Say something, Josh, for Christ's it's sake. It's true. It's true. Oh, you're shaving it too? Grooming? Shaving it? No. Didn't say shaving. I'm grooming it. Meaning what? Meaning I do a little trim action. Keep it neat. 1,186 votes on the poll. Moving right along. <laughs> I, I'm not, I, you know, back before the Joyce days, I would have had a wonderful line there. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm just skipping it right along. Right. Skipping and hopping and jumping, just like Brady. There are two main reasons why James Carville doesn't like Howard Dean, says this thing that, uh, that facts are passed along. The first is that Howard Dean doesn't trash other Democrats, and Carvel prefers Democrats who throw their own party under the bus. The second is that he's a political consultant, and as such, many of his friends have gotten rich off commissions from TV ads. As far as he's concerned, all donations to all Democratic committees exist so that he and his friends can get richer. Since Howard Dean is spending money on field organizers and grants to state parties, his friends tend not to get rich from the party the DNC raised. This is abhorrent to Carville since Democratic Party committees exist to make him and his friends rich. And it goes on, but a beep, but a boop, but a bop, and it's got, uh, whatever. 
Also, of course, Rahm Emanuel is uh, mostly responsible for deciding in uh, some races where they didn't spend enough money. You can read about that, I think, on one of the articles on our website tomorrow, I believe. Although probably a lot of these people are going to be staring there at that picture of Brady Quinn under the pool for hours, trying to see, well, is Neil Ryder, I don't really know, and I don't care. Who the hell cares whether he shaves his chest? I don't know that brought it up. I just noticed that, uh, you know, from the nipple to uh, where, from mm -hmm. the navel to the uh, whatever. You're the one that there, said it looks like he doesn't have any hair I there. said it looks like he shaves. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Hair. You're right. Yeah. But above the navel, I don't, who, who knows and who cares, you know? I wouldn't ask any questions. Hmm? A man whose violent arrest by Los Angeles police officers was videotaped. Of course, we've all seen that how many times? About 30, man. About 100 times. And posted on YouTube. Was scheduled to be released from jail yesterday. William Cardenas, 23, made an unexpected appearance in L.A. County Superior Court. He pleaded no contest to one misdemeanor count of fleeing from police. Two felony counts of resisting arrest charges against him were dropped in it. A gang enhancement to the charges was also in, uh, dropped. His attorney, Kwaku Duran, told reporters. Kwaku. Huh. What kind of a name is that? K-W-A-K-U. Kwaku. Duran said his client is... I wonder if he's kin to Ryan Duran, the former fireballing relief pitcher for the Yankees 100 years ago. Ryan Duran, with those real thick bottle, uh, Coke bottle glasses. Duran said his client is still somewhat dismayed by the assault that he suffered. He'd like to see justice. And tell, now let me tell you right now, you can forget about getting justice in California. If you want justice, go see... Don Corleone. That's right. That's the only, the only way you're going to get justice. Go see our paisan. So there you go. They showed that over and over a million times. Can I get back to my uh, poll there? Please. Keep getting me back on that picture again. I got yeah. better pictures than that, but nevertheless, or at least there are on the uh, Internet. 1,196 votes throughout American history. Which group has been treated the worst? How about guys who shave their privates? They've been treated pretty shabbily, called uh, Gay. all kinds of names. Indians, 498. Hello. 498 Indians. Remember that song, Ten Little Indians? Yeah. yeah. One little, two little. Mm-hmm. In fact, it reminds me of that shortening bread thing. Mama's little baby loves shortening, mm -hmm. like that, shortening. And shoe fly, pineapple, pan dowdy. Don't you dare. Oh. Indians, 498. Blacks, 420. we got a pretty good battle going on there between the blacks and Indians. Then after that, it's strictly a two-horse race. It's like affirmed in Alidar. Way back to the rest of the pack. Jews, 90. Women, 57. And, of course, we don't have any women listening, or women have a lot more votes than that. That's right. Certainly. Gays, 56. I hate this poll, only 44, 3.6%. Catholics, 16. And Mexicans, only 15. 15 little Mexicans. And, of course, I knew you probably have some smart-ass comment to make about Indians and Mexicans, but just let's move right along, okay? No, I didn't have anything there. Yeah, you would. Not me. Then I'm going to sneeze. Hey. 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 <laughs> Told you. Two narratives have begun to emerge from the... 2006 congressional elections. The first is that Democrats... Who the hell wrote this? I mean, just jump into this. Thomas Schaller in the New York Times. The fictional triumph of conservative Democrats. That's the headline on the story. Okay? He says, two narratives have begun to emerge from the 2006 congressional elections. The first is that Democrats didn't want so much to win as Republicans lost. The second is that Republicans who lost were beaten by a bunch of conservative Democrats. There's some truth to the first one. The election was a negative referendum on Bush and the Republican Congress, especially their mismanagement of Iraq, their ethical problems, and their inability to balance the federal budget or refrain from trying to distract the American uh, public with noisy wedge issues, rather than provide solutions to more pressing problems. But the second narrative is fiction, and it's puzzling that Republicans and conservatives are the ones peddling it. The poster boy for the Democrats won his conservative team is Heath Schuler a 34-year-old former University of Tennessee football star from Western North Carolina who played for the Redskins. We were through that the other day. Number five. Just hours after the results came in last Tuesday, the Times' David Brooks wrote in this space, many moderate Republicans survived despite my pessimistic expectations. Furthermore, many moderate Democrats won like Heath Schuller in North Carolina. Charles Krauthammer echoed the point in his Washington Post column on Friday. Democratic gains included the addition of many conservative Democrats, hence Heath Schuler of North Carolina, anti-abortion, pro-gun, anti-tax, and now a Democratic House member. But take a closer look at who actually won and lost last Tuesday. As of this writing, a few recounts are pending. Democrats captured six Senate seats and 28 House seats, and they're also expected to unseat Republican Representative Rob Simmons of Connecticut. 
Based on the National Journal's ideological ratings of Congress, the majority of defeated House Republicans were purged from the liberal third of the GOP caucus. Ten of the 28 most liberal Republicans lost, including four of the top 12. Jim Leach of Iowa, Nancy Johnson of Connecticut, Simmons, and Charlie Bass of New Hampshire. Sherwood Bollard of New York, sixth on the list of most liberal Republicans, is retiring from Congress, and the Democratic candidate won the race for his seat. As for the new class of congressional Democrats, sure it includes a few self-described pro-lifers and opponents of gun control, but the vast majority of House candidates in competitive races ran as Iraq war critics who support reproductive choice and embryonic stem cell research, who want to raise the minimum wage and oppose privatizing Social Security. A pack of blue dog Zell Millers, this is not. The Senate results are similar. Much attention has been paid to the flat-top haircut and heartland personality of farmer John Tester, Montana senator-elect, the way former Reagan Navy Secretary and Vietnam veteran Jim Webb used his son's combat boots to kick out Virginia George Makakowitz Allen, and the anti-choice position of Bob Casey, the newly elected Catholic Democrat from Pennsylvania. These biographical nuggets obscure the fact that these men and the other three new Democratic senators ran as strong economic populists and thundering critics of the war. Republican Conrad Burns of Montana closed the gap during the late stages of his campaign by criticizing Tester as a big government tax and spender. Rhode Island's Sheldon Whitehouse beat the most liberal Republican incumbent Senator Lincoln Chavey by running to his left. And in Ohio, Republican moderate Mike DeWine fell to Sherrod Brown, who was promptly named heir to the late Paul Wellstone, the uber-progressive senator from Minnesota. What we witnessed last week was the final stage of a regional realignment, one that began four decades ago in the wake of the Civil Rights Movement and slowly but steadily converted most Southern Dixiecrats into Republicans. Until this year, that transformation was incomplete as many Ford and Rockefeller-style Republicans continued to represent blue districts or blue states in the Northeast and Midwest. The Rust Belt alignment of 2006 provided a corrective. Now, presuming Simmons is defeated, Chris Shays of Connecticut will be the sole surviving Republican among 22 representatives from New England, although Maine and New Hampshire each have two Republican senators. Should any of them retire, Democrats will be poised to take their place. The great irony of the 2006 midterm elections for Republicans is that the conservatives who pulled the party to the right survived, while the liberal wing was decimated. Because the Democrats who beat those liberal Republicans ran even further left, the notion that conservative Democrats carried today is plainly absurd. Conservative talking heads usually rush to paint Democrats as a pack of tenured out-of-mainstream liberals. That's why it's so surprising that some of these same voices are now cherry-picking the results in an effort to perpetuate the fiction that Republicans lost, but conservatives somehow won. It suggests that this year's defeat so stunned the conservative movement, it's lost its messaging mojo, too. For liberal Democrats, that may be the biggest victory of all. Oh, there's Dan Abash with that the senior Wentz's mouth. 1,209 votes on the poll. That is pretty impressive, and that's because everybody is studying Brady Quinn's chest very, very closely. The biggest name. Hair by hair. Talent. Piece by piece. Neal Rogers. Sports Radio 560. QAM. Most disgusting program. I urge everyone to complain to this station. Discover diuretics. Is life an endless nightmare of confusion and chaos leading to a bleak nothingness? Or is it just me? Page 8. Why do I have dreams about my mother in Saran Wrap? Page 69. Why did I give my life savings to a bizarre cult religion founded by a bad science fiction writer? Page 1999. Am I worthy of 7th level Zardoz or am I a butthead? Page 2525. Discover diuretics. Flushing questions from the mind. Feel the power. Feel the movement. Diuretics by L. Ron Hubbub. Over 20 million copies sold. Can you believe it? No, I really can't. 11-18, there's a sucker born every minute. So I just uh, emailed Josh a, a better picture of uh, Brady Quinn on the phone there. Also shirtless. Which you probably should put that under the other one. Can you handle it? Put it over the other one or? Under the other one, next to it. However you want to do it, okay? Put it uh, in However between. However I want to do it. Okay. Stick it wherever <laughs> the hell you want to stick it. That's right. But anyway, I'm thinking that maybe we ought to be, uh, like George, ought to be studying that picture very, very carefully. Because if he's like uh, trimming in the, I mean, it, it, that, I just, I don't know. It seems awfully gay to me. Once upon a time. In America. I would have uh, agreed with you wholeheartedly. But not now. It's Times a, it's have a changed. new thing, man. It's a whole new fad. We were discussing it, and the, the girls, uh, you know, they started doing it, and then they started insisting that the guys were shaving their chest? Well, whatever. All of the above. Yeah. They said, if I'm going to be neat and trim, then so you So in other words, you're also. saying that the guys who do they're like girly men, girly guys. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying oh. that they must be dating and having sex with girls. In some cases, I would agree. Paul Waldman writes on time. Now, you got that picture yet? I realize no, you're not yet. very, very slow. No, I'm down. And probably in the next half hour or so, we'll have that other one up. 
And within five minutes, there'll be several. All, all the Queens, man, it's a Queen Festival today on our website. Well, why the hell not? Let's do something to get people on it, right? And then maybe just by accident, they'll come across some of those really interesting stories on there, and they'll say, oh, holy crap, I actually learned something on here today. Right? Right on. Besides just a bunch, a bunch of crap of guys who shave the hair off their chest and arms and ass and pubic and stuff like that. Jesus, God Almighty, that seems awfully fey. Not just gay, gay, but fey. You know what I mean? Like as in Faye Wayne. Like femme. Like sissified. But at any rate. Well, I told you when I went to uh, high school, we used to uh, uh, swim naked together in the uh, swimming class, in gym class. I thought you said uh, elementary school. No, in high school, in not high elementary, school? my dear Watson. High school. They made you do that in high school? Let me say it again. High school. Oh, my God. Right. I'd have dropped out. No, I'd have joined up for uh, extra time in the pool. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, I don't recall any guys. And, of course, there's like 17, 18-year-olds, uh, junior, senior years in high school. I don't recall any guys with hair. And that, that was, that's a zillion years ago. No, I didn't have any when I was 18 either. I'm thinking that maybe by the time you get to be About 30 minutes. like that, if you're going to get hairy, that, that's when it's going to start. More or less. Well, who the hell cares when you come right down you? to me? yours? No, I do not. Who brought Why? it up? I was just talking about his, uh, the fact that it looked mm -hmm. like his pubes were shaved, that's all. And then you went into this whole song uh -huh. of dance about all straight guys shave their chest and they shave their arms and they shave their... Rectum. Yeah, life is a close shave. Is all what I said was, uh, I think you're right, I think he shaves, and you were the one that went into the whole thing. I don't care. How do you like that? I, I don't care believe less. you. What? That I don't that care? You care cause I, I don't care. I don't. Let me ask you this question. Am I ever going to meet him? Am I going to see him? Am I going to touch him? Am I going to lick his uh, belly? No. That depends on if that wish comes true. Well, no, it's not. And it won't. See, I don't live in a fantasy world like a lot of people out there. Oh, gee, I got the hots for so-and-so. Well, great. You're never going to see them. It's fine to, you know, take a look. You know, look at the picture. Mm -hmm. Continue, uh, you know, deceiving yourself, deluding yourself. That Brittany's going, once she gets back completely into shape... Now that she's dropped uh, K FedEx, that she's going to be knocking on your door, just begging yeah, you. Whatever, it don't matter. Yeah, you know what matters. Let's see. Paul Waldman writes. See, we're getting really distracted from our main thing, which is good because they don't want to hear this other stuff anymore. The election's over, and like I said to you, they're like, uh, you know, they've had it. They need a break now. We, we you deserve a break today. So we're going to get some of that really good pizza from uh, Brooklyn Pizza. See, I didn't have any pizza yesterday, and, and that's a good thing because it was Wednesday. It was a WW. It was with my Wednesday. Although when I did get home last night, I didn't have some of that um, that low carb pasta. Not a good idea. Why not? Because if you're diabetic, it doesn't have like the instant thing, like regular pasta on your blood sugar and send it skyrocketing up. But it has a slow over a uh, several hour period of time. I see. Like a slow rise. You know what I mean? Creeps like a slow rise your, in your Levi's, like, like an that. Engine? Like that. And as a result, it wasn't a good idea. So remind me, don't be doing that again anytime okay. soon. Hey. Don't be eating no uh, pasta, low carb or otherwise, before you go to bed. Very bad idea. In fact, I may have to lay out the rest of the day. I'll see you. 1,231 votes on the poll. Throughout American history, which group has been treated the worst? Indians, 511. Blacks, 434. That's the race right there. That's the human race. Jews, only 92. Women, 58. Gays, 57. I hit this poll, 47. Mexican, 16. And Catholic, 16. We got, and, of course, uh, Mexican Catholics, which would seem to be redundant, wouldn't it be? Right. You think there's any Mexicans who aren't Catholics? There, there must be. A few are Jehovah's Witnesses, I understand. Really? Was it you that was reading that story? On or, your door? Or I saw it on Mexicans the news. Against, yeah. I hope Mexicans don't come knocking on your door. They'll be in for a bad <laughs> surprise. Paul Waldman on TomPayne.com says, Democrats, don't whip out. Don't whip out. Whatever you do, please. Please. Do I have time for this before the break? Oh, I sure hope so. It's too long. It's way too long. Uh, let me just read the beginning of it. Because the audience gets really pissed off when I do these really long, mm -hmm. you know, especially the two farter parters. You know what I mean? What do you mean? The ones that I have to carry over from, uh, you know, oh, uh, okay. during a break. Mm -hmm. The two farter <coughs> parters. Paul Waldman, Democrats don't wimp out. All over Washington, the sage barons of the establishment media are warning Democrats not to get too cocky. Don't move too fast, they say. Don't push a bunch of wacky left-wing ideas. 
Seek compromise, give ground, hew to the center, for there only there lies the greatest prize of all, the, pri the praise of David Broder and Joe Klein, the nodding approval of the Washington Post editorial page, and the admiration of the Beltway Cognoscenti reserved for those who know their place and know whose rings they should be kissing. Bull. What Democrats need to do is spend the next two years crushing their opponents like bugs. It's not about mercy. It's not about manners. It's about three fundamental goals, limiting the damage that the Bush administration can do, passing whatever legislation they can in the short term to help the American public, and laying the foundation for future progressive victories. Democrats finally have the upper hand, and now is the time to use it. And here are a few things they can do to get started, and then he lays them all out. Investigate, but smartly. Don't be afraid to pick fights. Boycott Fox, he says. Attack conservatism. And what else? And that's it. Boycott Fox. The Fox News Channel has been a reliable megaphone for White House talking points, a veritable RNC House organ proclaiming that Republicans are noble public servants and Democrats are whiny hippies who have not engaged in actual conspiracy with al-Qaeda, are certainly serving the ends of America's enemies. It has also functioned as a safe haven for Republicans to run to when things look bad. Shoot the guy in the face and you can do your first interview with Britt Hume, securing the knowledge that he won't ask any tough questions. So Democrats should say to the following to Fox, you want to spread GOP propaganda all day? Be our guest, after all, it's a free country. But don't expect any Democratic newsmakers to legitimize you with their presence. We'll go on every other network, be interviewed by every other legitimate news organization, but we don't consider ourselves under any obligation to pretend that buffoons like Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, and John Gibson are news professionals who deserve a moment of our time. We're not going to try to fight you. We'll just act like you don't exist. Excellent idea. It don't exist on my TV set. It never darkens my screen, Fox News, which is an oxymoron if there ever was one. Fox News, my ass. 1,242 votes on the poll, man. That is pretty heavy, heavy duty. And you want to know why? Why? It's all those naked pictures that we're putting on there. Must be. Well, we can't put naked female pictures on there anymore, so how about naked pictures of guys? Whatever you want. Tracked a whole new breed. I don't see that other picture up there yet. Have you got it? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> well, you don't have to say it in such a negatory tone. Like, oh, yeah, uh, I got it. Sound excited. Ooh, yeah. it you sound like you're excited about it, okay? A gallery of Grady uh, Quinn pictures. Hey, listen, it's something different, okay? It's something a little bit yeah, different. I'll say. Did I bitch and moan? In fact, didn't I pick? I, I actually picked out. I, I discovered some of those uh, hot chicks that were on those pictures back in yep. the day when we could put them on there. But that's different. Well, what does that mean? Women that's are different. beautiful and men are disgusting. I see. Women are beautiful. Men are, gross, are disgusting. Nasty, nasty the look biggest things of the best talent. This is one Neil look Rogers, at one of those Force Radio 560 I believe you. Nah. Hi, this is Larry King, and they don't come any better than Neil Rogers. Let's all rise for the new Speaker of the House, Geldy Pelosi. Yeah, let's go. Now, for our first daughter of business, I say we ain't going to impeach nobody because, uh... We don't have those kind of balls. Now, see, here, here. <laughs> now, Benny, you've got something to say about doing some uh, legislating over here. <laughs> Stand up and spill it. I do, 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 Mrs. Speaker. Who the hell are you? Why, I'll have you know, I am none other than Mo Howard and David, representing a precinct of 13 of prestigious Indy Town in Florida. Yeah, so? I propose we were more... Put that little... chicken leg down. Huh? <laughs> I said put that chicken leg down. And put your shoes back on. What do you think this is here? Well, I was just getting to the watermelon. Were you about to say something about removing the National Guard from Iraq? No, no. There ain't no National Guard there. I keep trying to tell everybody that. Then what do you want? I propose we remove the word God from our Pledge of Allegiance and replace it with the word Doi. One nation under Doi? Absolutely. Doi. And the Jeep Liberty for All. Eleven thirty two at five sixty WQM. Noah Mad Dog. Oh yeah, we got Mad Dog today too. What am I talking about? This is one of those forty days a year when he actually works. In fact, he's on all week long. Oh. Every day. Is that exciting or what? Mark that down. Not too many weeks when he actually works five days. Mm-hmm. And maybe he ought to, like, do something nice for Hank. Maybe if he had more time to spend on the computer, he wouldn't be eating so much. Get him on the Internet. So I'm like Larry King, who's like, I, I just can't believe anybody <laughs> would brag about something like that. Now, I understand somebody saying that they haven't used it, but he's obviously oblivious. Like, like a, a media person like him? Well, he's an old fart that wears diapers, but, I mean, he's oblivious. So he doesn't even know what it is. It, or you push buttons and stuff. Like, yeah. like, he doesn't even know what a computer is. 
Wow. Well, let me tell you how it works, Larry. It's like this. <laughs> yeah. Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, what a surprise, has officially been named Speaker-elect of the House. Ross Dory has learned. It's official now, okay? Like at the track. You know, the result of the fourth race is official. Democrats chose Pelosi unanimously earlier this morning. Representative Jim Clyburn, Democrat of South Carolina, was elected majority whip. And Rahm Emanuel, who I hate like poison of Illinois, was chosen to become caucus chairman. There's the real chigger in the woodpile at Rahm Emanuel. He's evil. A battle for majority leader between John Murtha and Steny Hoyer is still un- Decided. Let me say it again. Undecided. A secret vote leader today will determine whether Murtha, a Pelosi a pal, or Hoyer, who once challenged the speaker-elect for minority leader, will become her top lieutenant, or as they say here, her top lieutenant. Well, what, what is that, lieutenant? Well, well, I mean, it's just, I know it's Canadian I, vote and I, British. I think that must have been how it started. It sounds British. Yeah, well, of course. All, all the linguistic crap that uh-huh. we have here is, uh, always started as British. Like color, C-O-L-O-U-R. That's a British thing, and of course the Canadians can't, they can't break the uh, umbilical cord. They can't chop mm-hmm. it. That's why the Queen is on the $20 bill, Queen Elizabeth. Can you explain that to me? No. That nasty, ugly, old, surly bitch. 1,260 votes on the poll. How come every day we get to a point where it's 1,260? I think it's an omen. I think the Lord is trying to tell me, return to your roots, baby. Return to Albion, Michigan. And W-A-L-M, where the ghost of Derwood Carn is still stumbling down the uh, stairs pulling up his pantaloons from the turlet, trying to get ready to do the new news. In a new piece, syndicated columnist Ann Coulter, I bet you she shaves her chest. Oh, yeah. With a lawnmower. Ann Coulter belittles Representative Nancy Pelosi's ascension to House Speaker and in curious fashion promotes and then knocks President Bush's minority and female appointments to his cabinet. The media yawned when Condoleezza Rice became the first black woman Secretary of State, writes Coulter, but when Nancy Pelosi achieves the minor distinction of becoming the first female Speaker of the House, the New York Times acts like she's invented cold fusion. Coulter claims that only 77 documents noted Rice's achievement, half of them being issues of Jet, Essence, Ebony, or Black Entrepreneur magazine. She then notes the numerous minority appointments that the President's made to his cabinet. In addition to Rice, she refers to Colin Powell, Alberto Vio 5 Gonzalez, Carlos Gutierrez, Elaine Chow, and retarded American Norma Mineta. That's what she says, retarded American Norma Mineta. It was as if, as if Mar- Mariah Carey and Tiger Woods had children, and they all joined the Bush cabinet, she writes. Coulter then curiously quips that the White House has been lousy with women since the first Bush term, mentioning Secretaries Ann Veneman, Gail Norton, and Margaret Spellings. I wonder if Ann Veneman was related to George Veneman from the Groucho Marx So You Bet Your Life show. For a while there, she says, it looked as if Bush might become the first president whose entire cabinet's menstrual cycles were synchronized. The controversial bitch a columnist doesn't spare her usual rancor against Democrats, noting that Senator John Kerry hired only white males for top positions in his presidential campaign, even ridicules departing moderate GOP Senator Lincoln Chafee as the first developmentally disabled senator. How do you like that? That bitch is at it again. Mm-hmm. She is one of the most evil of the evildoers. Evil. Hateful. Sow. Bitch. Bought off. Doing her job. Yeah, her and Miss Fudge. They're probably sitting together there in Miami Beach right now in his condo with a bunch of naked young guys and girls. 1,267 votes on the pool. Throughout American history, which group has been treated the worst? It's a two-horse race. Indians, 529. Blacks, 447. Everybody else, small potatoes. It's the Indians and the blacks fighting it out, baby. Fighting it out to maintain their turf, their territory. Isn't that what it's all about? Shona. It's the turf wars. Oh, and haven't I told you and everybody else, do not ever. Nobody listens to me. Nobody will pay any attention. I mean, they listen to the show, but they don't pay attention to what I tell them. It's all, like everything's a big <laughs> freaking joke, you know. Don't go on a cruise. Don't waste your money. if you got. Let me say right. it again. You only have a limited amount that. of time you're going to be alive. You only have, during that period of lifetime, you're going to have a limited amount of vacation time. Okay? Limited vacation time. So unless you want to go on permanent vacation, don't hop you and your ass and your wife, your girlfriend, boyfriend, your family on a cruise ship. You're going to be very sorry more often than not. By the time Carnival Cruise Line's Liberty pulls into Port Everglades this weekend from a transatlantic voyage, more than 700 people on board will have been affected with a highly contagious (laughs) stomach-like, stomach-flu-like illness that appears to be 
A norovirus, the cruise line said yesterday. Norovirus. The outbreak could be the largest reported in recent years by the cruise industry. It's impossible for now to say what the source is, said David Forney, chief of the cruise ship sanitation program at the National Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He said it's likely passengers brought the virus with them when they boarded, and it spread from there. But U.S. inspectors will look at whether food or water contributed to the outbreak. The cruise industry, which is required to report the illnesses to the CDC, records dozens of viral outbreaks each year, with affecting, uh, mostly affecting uh, fewer than 100 people, most of the individual ones. While often publicized, the cruise ship outbreaks are far less common than they seem, affecting about one in every 3,600 cruise ship passengers, said Christine Fisher, spokeswoman for the International Council of Cruise Lines, an industry lobbying group, as if she's got any credibility, as if she's an objective bystander. Your chances of actually contracting norovirus are much higher on land than on a cruise, she said. Let's go on a sea cruise with uh, Frankie Ford. Isn't that who did that, Frankie Ford? Sea cruise. I'll check As of Tuesday, 556 guests and 154 crew members on board the Liberty had reported symptoms lasting one to three days, puking their guts out. According to a statement issued yesterday by Carnival Cruise Lines, there he is, Frankie Ford, am I right? Yes. Sea Cruise. You gonna talk it up or what? The Miami-based company said, you, you were just looking to chop it off before I, uh, you know. Not going to do didn't. it. Good, good job. The Miami-based company said the ship is carrying 2,804 paying passengers, 1,166 crew members. The ship currently on a 16-day tour that began November 3rd in Rome, scheduled to arrive in Fort Lauderdale on Sunday. It began in Roma, okay? The outbreak began. Well, let me ask you, when you go on a cruise, how much time do you actually have uh, when you go to these different places? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll, five I'll, minutes. I'll ask somebody. I'll get the beast in here. He goes on them all the time. No, that's because mommy and daddy are loaded with cash, and they keep sending him and his wife out. You know, I was thinking about that when I was shaving yesterday. The fact that he's actually married to something living and breathing, who's actually maybe even touching him. Mm-hmm. It just, it is so unacceptable to me. It's just beyond my comprehension. I'm going to ask him how, how he grooms. No. Oh. <laughs> how do you groom a schmoo? Well, you have, first, you have to tape your razor on the end of the Ask stick. Patrick McGowan how they groomed Rover in The Prisoner. <laughs> the outbreak began within 24 hours of the departure and r- raged the strongest during the first five days while the ship was crossing the Atlantic Ocean. They put the motion in the ocean. Since Monday, the number of passengers reporting symptoms fell dramatically, he said, suggesting the ship is getting the outbreak under control. Well, hallelujah. Goody, goody gumdrop. The ship was originally set to sail again Sunday, but Carnival pushed the departure ba- day back to next Tuesday so the crew could have two days to disinfect the ship and quit puking their guts out and clean up all the vomit and God only knows what other kind of droppings all over that ship. I think they put the, well, they certainly put the first three letters in ship and I think maybe a fourth one too, the A and a P. 1,275 votes, which means we're going to have by noon over 1,300 votes, and people are talking about it at the water cooler. The biggest name. I think so. Oh. 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 This oh. is Neil Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. Holy Mackinac! This is Joe Bow and the voice of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you're listening to the Hockey Authority, Neil God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting divorced again. I made you believe K Fed was my man. Forever he's a bum and a lush. His music is lame. That new CD sucks. You reconcile up differences. His Eleven forty seven thirteen till noon at five sixty WQM. Well, there's Abe Lincoln with that big hat on there again. It's a spot for more drugs. That's that's what they do on the networks. Not only do they give you BS news. 
but they peddle all these dangerous drugs. Now, Josh did a fabulous job of getting that other picture of Brady Quinn up there above the uh, previous one. Now, I challenge you to look at that picture where he's standing there on the phone. And who's uh, that other guy with another football one? in his hand standing real close? Challenge you to look at that and tell me that he has been shaving it, uh, trimming it, uh, needing it. I'm, I'm sorry. While I'm, while I'm doing that, because far be it for me to uh, not pass a fax along, but it was uh, Let me say it again. Yes. barely legible uh, right. some story. But then at the bottom, the gentleman wrote that he's a 50-year-old guy with no hair on his chest, but he has begun uh, grooming down there because uh, the girls want it that way. Yeah. So there's a, a point for each of us. I see. Well, whatever. Look, uh, you know, Nair, which you mentioned earlier, uh, accomplishing any, a great Any many guy miracles. that does Nair, Gay. I'm sorry. That, that's as faggy as you can get. I'll, I'll, I'll let, let you what anybody call says. that, but I, I understand it's a very Take uh, a look at that common. picture there, and if there is, if he's been uncommon. trimming that, shaving it, he's been, maybe he's got somebody doing it for him. That's possible, too. Think there's any uh, volunteers out there for that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have both hands up in the air. <laughs> wow. Well, one anyway. The other well, one's busy. What's holding the mic up? 589 votes on the poll. So there's two pictures for all you fags out there. And, of course, the ladies, too, probably say, yeah, both hey, of look, them. look at what a hot hunk he is. Yeah, he is. The Miami Republican lawmaker who's about to be one of Florida's two most powerful legislators says he supports the concept of having a paper trail for all voting systems in the state. Did we get a uh, fax from anybody who was at uh, Gulfstream yesterday? No. With a little bit more information about those slot machines and what they got there. Well, they've only got it. They started with 500 and some odd. Representative Marco Rubio, who will be sworn in next week as House Speaker, Florida House, said it's tough not to consider some additional measures to verify election results in light of the recount over the 18,380 alleged non-votes called undervotes in Sarasota County's 13th Congressional District race. There is a legitimate question about how could 18,000 votes vanish and not be recorded. We should be in favor of any measures we can take to make sure that never happens again and the people have faith in our election system, Rubio said. Likely story. We're going to have faith in the election system. Right. A machine recount was completed late Tuesday in the race, extending Republican Vern Buchanan's lead over Democrat Christine Jennings from 377 votes to 401. The margin is still so small that a second and lengthier hand recount of the balance will take place starting today in the district's five counties. But in Sarasota, where the number of rounded votes dwarf the other counties, the so-called manual recount simply means printing results out of the computer so they can be viewed on paper. No change is expected, and the case will likely end up in court through a little-known federal law. Uh, could give Congress the ability to intervene. Meantime, the Secretary of State's office is conducting a review of the ATM-style touchscreen machines in Sarasota County, and even now Republicans are starting to question the GOP-controlled legislature's resistance to having some type of paper record that the voter can confirm before le leaving the polling place. At a pre-election debate, Charlie Crist, your uh, Yay. governor, said he supports the idea of a paper trail, but the governor-elect has since refused to elaborate, and Democrats are skeptical of Crist and now Rubio's commitment. Hey, by the way, Governor Crist, the uh, pictures on there of, uh, what's his name, uh, Brady Quinn naked are for you, sweetheart. That's for our new governor-elect. And you know what he's probably, as he's looking at him, he's probably going uh, just like this. <laughs> just like that. Well, he's rolling his tongue a little bit because he wants to be fit in with the other right-wingers in Florida like Marco Rubio. Rubio needs to give it more than lip service. He needs to make it a priority, said Miami Beach Representative Dan Gelber, leader of House Democrats who have watched the GOP repeatedly defeat a paper trail concept. And in Washington, two longtime congressional critics of electronic voting machines yesterday seized on the turmoil to renew a call for a paper trail. With Representative Rush Holt, Democrat of New Jersey, saying the paperless systems are a direct threat to our democracy. Boca Democrat Bobby Wexler added that it strained cred credulity to believe that 18,000 voters in the county voted in the Senate race and for county judge, but miraculously chose not to vote in the congressional race. Wexler is suing in federal court for a paper trail. You go, Bobby. And Sarasota activists announced a public hearing at 6 o'clock tonight for Sarasota area residents to talk about their problems voting on Election Day. Reggie Mitchell sounds like a ball player. Reggie Mitchell, lawyer for People for the American Way, said the liberal group wants to re-vote as well. You go, Reggie. Doesn't that sound like a ball player, Josh? Reggie Mitchell? Sure. About 13%, well, I mean, maybe once in, back in the day it sounded like a ball player. Today his name has got to have, like, all consonants. About 13% of the congressional race ballots were under votes in Sarasota County compared to a 1% rate in the U.S. Senate and governor races. Critics have argued that the ballot might have been difficult to read. Others say voters might have been turned off by the negative campaign ads in the congressional race. Still others said the machines didn't properly record votes, which anybody knows that's the uh, correct choice. Anybody with a half a brain knows. 
Dayton Broward used the same type of machines as Sarasota. Election systems and software is Ivotronic. Lester Sola, supervisor of elections in Dade, said he's not opposed to creating a paper trail to supplement the electronic vote. He said we're willing to do anything to increase voter confidence. Cost to add the needed printers, about $8.7 million, Sola said. Cost to replace touchscreens, about $9 million. Broward, more voters would cost a little bit more. Ultimately, the decision will be made by state officials who have yet to approve of touchscreen printers and county commissions. Whether Chris and Rubio want to add a printer to the machines or scrap them in favor of fill-in-the-blank paper ballot and optical scan machines has yet to be seen. Rubio said the issue should be decided in legislative committees with input from the industry and the counties. I think just a paper ballot where you make a big X. Big X, like where you sign your name, a big X. I think that's perfect for about, about 70% of the state of Florida, especially upstate, you know, where the median IQ is lower than their digit size. You know what I'm talking about? What are you talking about? Talking about your dumb rednecks. That's what I'm mm. talking about. Rednecks. I just can't take no more rednecks. Too many rednecks in America. That's the problem. It's got nothing to do with blue and red states. It's blue and rednecks. 1,300 votes on our very prestigious poll. And give a little tip of the hat to George for being on top of it yesterday, as opposed to usually forgetting to change it all together. Right. And putting engines on there. I intended to put them on there when I was making up my list, but somehow it was an oversight by me. And if I would have changed the damn pool and wouldn't have been there plunging my guts out of Woodbine, I would have probably wouldn't have had Indians. Well, we wouldn't have had the number one the result. Thing, the pool. Everyone forgets about the engines, you know. They're, they're I don't. Well, I think about them all the time. Those horrendous ads to scare the public that they ran because they wanted the uh, gambling all to themselves be, uh, before that election two years ago. But nevertheless, oh that, yeah that. Throughout American history, which group has been treated worst? By the way, how many hairy Indians do you see? None. I was uh, mentioning that earlier. The Asians and the Indians um, seem to be quite hairless. You ever hear of a Mexican hairless? Yeah, I have. I think they are, too. A lot of Latin Americans are hairless, as a matter of fact. The Indians, yeah. Latinos. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. See, I knew it. I knew it. What? I mean, like the Ecuadorians, they're Indians. Correct. Throughout American history, which, boy, are they ugly, the people from Ecuador. I'm sure that there might be a few who look human, but... I've seen a couple Told you when I was in Berlin, all the uh, the Ecuador, uh, mm -hmm. the World Cup team was but there they in the hotels. I beg your pardon? The good-looking Ecuadorians I saw were not Indians. I see. There we go. picking on the Indians again. Hey, what do you know? Are you picking on moon-faced Indians again? Yes. You, you bastard. Mm -hmm. You relentless uh, hard-ass. 1,304 votes throughout American history. Which group has been treated worse? Indians, 546. It's time to repent. It's time to make, uh, smoke the peace pipe. Blacks, 455. They're smoking it. Jews, 96. Women, only 62. And that's probably we got 62 women. Do you think that any guys voted for women? Of course not. Guys like to slap their women around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Put them in their place. Women, 62. Gay, 61. I hate this poll. Only 51, 3.9%. Catholics, 17. And Mexicans, 16. Now, Luis Miguel, there's a Mexican for you. He don't have no hair on his chest. How do you like that? How do you half know? Mexican, half Italian. Although Italians tend to be hairy. There are certain... How do you know? Oh, certain, yeah. I know. Like Brillo. Believe me. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that uh, really... Uh, ooh. Like you like, can't tell the pubic hair from the chest like hair. That carpet, kind of deal, yeah. yeah. Like a flying, like a magic carpet. Mm -hmm. Like Ron freaking Jeremy, for crying out loud. You know, Pop had Peter North. What do I get Ron Jeremy? That's what Al Goldstein brings in. Maybe that's why Al fell on those really tough times, you know what? Maybe the Lord was punishing him for bringing the hairy, fat, disgusting Ron Jeremy and polluting our studio. The biggest names, the best talent. This is You're Bean gross, Ronnie. Disgusting. Five sixty Q A M. Well, uh, it be the twelve to one hour on W Q A M. Goodbye, Ed Bradley. We'll miss you badly. You died along the line of journalists who are a dying breed, even though you couldn't dance or sing. You knew how to report and speak, unlike the new news bimbos. That's not to mention Katie Couric, who wouldn't know the news if you crammed the news up her tube. Cube. We're stuck with bobblehead boobs Whose idea of the news Is nonsense, pablum, and puke You see, Moonbees Not every TV viewer Is as dumb as you 
I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. If all it takes is being cuter than Walter Cronkite, I'd like to punch the CBS. I, 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 I. Trouble one. She's uh, not only is she uh, in third place right now, but the ratings for CBS Evening News are down as compared to a year ago. Oh, huh, what a shocker! And even old fuddy daddy Bobby Schieffer was doing bigger number than Katie. He's probably chuckling. Now, I'll tell you, he's chuckling. His old Danny Rather is chuckling. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> 1,318 votes on the poll <laughs> on a really very heavy-duty man. It feels like we've been here for 100 hours today working our brains out, arguing about guys shaving their um, chests and other parts. Right. See, shaving, I can understand, is one thing, even though I still find it to be, uh, I don't know, gross. You know, be what you are, for crying out loud. If you're going to be a walking for a ball, be that, okay? No. You'll still get a little action somewhere. Somebody no, will overlook it. Somebody really desperate. You're not going to get any action from who you want to get it from. Oh, I see. What do you do if you're a policewoman trying to take a statement from a Hasidic Jew who refuses to look at you, never mind answer questions? Beat him with I a club. I never back. thought about that before, did you? Beat him with a club, I imagine. In Montreal, an internal police document recommends stepping aside and calling on a male colleague... Advice that's infuriated some officers and the union that represents them. In Montreal, eh? The guidance is contained in a slim newsletter the Montreal Police Service says is meant to promote cultural sensitivity, but critics see it as the latest in a series of cases where civil rights collide with efforts at reasonable accommodation of religious and cultural minorities. The issue is a major topic in Montreal where a litany of analogous incidents has come to light in recent months and where the pundits are suggesting the outer limits of official multiculturalism have been reached. The question has even prompted the provincial government to set up an expert committee to provide advice on how to craft reasonable accommodations in public instructions like schools and hospitals. But there are clearly still some kinks to be worked out. The piece in the police newsletter, which the service stresses is not a formal police department policy, is headlined, Sometimes Being Ignored is Respectful. The kinks. Very good. It then explains the cultural sensitivity of Hasidic Jews and says, your role as a professional is to facil- facilitate ex- uh, exchanges with your interlocutor. Your interlocutor. <laughs> In <laughs> some cases, that could mean bringing your male colleague to intervene. The president of La Fraternité des Police, uh, whatever, of Montreal, which represents the union, which represents the city's 4,200 cops, said it was discriminatory for the police service to give such advice. We support reaching out to cultural groups. It's to our members' advantage, and if they do it every way, a day, but saying that it's okay for somebody to tell a female officer to step aside and let the men take over is just going too far, said Yves Francois, who demanded yesterday the police service retract its stand. We have 1,200 women in the service. Gender relations are going pretty well. We've long talked about equality, and there's no issue there, he said. But you can't tell someone to stand aside and be quiet because it's discriminatory. Police spokeswoman Melissa Carroll said this is not a new policy, and the passage in a column in the October issue of the in- internal newsletter, Lure Just, mm-hmm. whatever the hell that means, presented as a hypothetical scenario involving a robbery in a Hasidic bakery, simply serves to inform officers about situations they may encounter. A robbery in a Hasidic bakery. Talk about long hair. I bet you won't find any Hasidim who are hairless. No. Oh, Jesus. Well, I will say this. You'll find plenty of uh, Italian guys who are hairless. Even though you're thinking about that hairy, like Greeks too. Uh, Aren't you thinking I, about Greeks and Italians, Mediterranean kind of people, really very hairy guys? I defer to your expertise in this well, area. Well, trust me when I tell you, I, man. I do. In some Hasidic communities which observe an ultra Orthodox form of Judaism, in other words, really extreme Getchkis, scriptural interpretations forbid men from interacting with, speaking to, or touching women to whom they aren't related by blood or marriage. Not that they're living in the Stone Age, you understand, it's just that they're uh, in the Stone Age. The incident's the latest in a series of high-profile cases. Earlier this month, a Montreal YWCA made headlines and prompted a petition from members over a decision to install frosted windows in order to accommodate a Hasidic school across the alley. I bet you that frosted a lot of asses. Last summer, a suburban Montreal school board found itself at the center of a controversy after it closed a school pool and covered windows to allow two Muslim female students to take a swim test. Toronto police only accommodate requests for specific offers from Hasidic males. Anyone else who asks when someone comes into a station in a non-emergency situation. If we're investigating something criminal, whatever officer arrives on the scene, that's what they'll get, Constable Norman Smart said. Norman Smart. 
Constitutional expert Julius Gray warned against the type of advice in the police newsletter, saying it risks doing more harm than good. We should only make accommodations in order to help people integrate. He said, I'm opposed to the ghettoization of people, said Gray. Some Hasidic community leaders, meanwhile, hailed the pamphlet's example as a respectful position in regard to their religious beliefs. But I'm not all that complicated. If there's a male officer and female officer, I'll speak to the man. But if they're both women, I'll speak to them. Montreal shop owner Fivel Binder told La Presse. Well, cox ahoy, sweetheart, okay? That's why so many uh, Anglophiles, people who speak in English, are fleeing from Montreal. Are they? Coming to more civilized places like Toronto, where everybody speaks English whether they want to or not. How do you like that? Mm-hmm. You don't have any of that crap here, even with all the people from India and China and Philippines and Pakistan, all those hairless Chinese guys and women. Although I think the women might be a little hairy, but nevertheless. They can be. 1,331 votes. I'll tell you one thing about the Chinese, man. They are smooth and silky. Make no mistake about that. Mm -hmm. Smooth and silky. Like butter? Just like butter. Throughout American history, which group has been treated worse? 1,331 votes, and it's only 1,207. We are going to do a crap load of votes on there today. Can't you smell it, fella? I'll tell it. Mm -hmm. A crap load. I can smell it. Crap. And there's no, only, there's no point in reading the rest of them because they're all, like, uh, you know, way in the behind. There's only a two-horse race. Indians, 554, 41.6%, and blacks, 468, 35.1%. Do we have a fax uh, from anybody who was at the... Uh, Gulfstream yesterday. <laughs> How about our on the scene reporter? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, I, I must be I must be going through change of life or something like that, you know. I know. Now from the ABC News desk. <laughs> I'm gonna. I think one day I'll do the whole show. Maybe I'll get some helium in here. You know, although helium is not good if you if you suck too much of it. That's right. Helium, that is. Yeah, it's not too good. So I wonder if we're getting a big uh, viewership on there. Every queen in town is looking at those pictures of uh, Brady Quinn on there, just about as naked as you're ever going to see him, I'll tell you that. And they're thinking, holy cow, that's a stud. That is really somebody right there. He can really bring it over to my house. Maybe he'll deliver you some pizza. I'd even order Domino's if he'd deliver it. Oh, maybe, okay. that's who he, maybe that's who he's on the phone with in that uh, picture on top there. I think he's ordering pizza. Pizza. Maybe he's, maybe he's taking an order for a delivery. Maybe, maybe he delivers it right to your door. Mm. That special, special delivery. <laughs> it would sure be special. I'm, I'll get over this. You'll understand. I realize the audience is probably saying, what is wrong with him? That's all he talks about the last two days. I don't know what it's all about, where it came from. It's adorable. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's a crush. I have a crush. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know what I did? I did a really bad thing, which hopefully you'll tell me how to st get, get rid of it. Because, you know, you can uh, create wallpaper with a click of your mouse with the right click. Mm -hmm. And the picture that's on top there... Uh, it, it, it just didn't come out the way I wanted to. And so as a result, it eliminated my previous wallpaper, the uh, uh, James Franco thing from uh, Tristan and his old, and uh -huh. I don't know how to get it back. No, did you save the picture of the original one somewhere? No. Oh. I don't know how to get rid of this. Don't worry about wanna, it. You, huh? just, you just have to find the original picture on the Internet like you, uh, like you did the first like time. Like I did the first time. Like Google, and Google then Images, I think, is what you did. Turn, this yeah. piece of crap. Well, the picture blew up so big that you really can't even well, see the can, face. You can change that. I mean, if you want the picture to, uh, to stay in its proper proportions, we can change that, too. How do we do that? I'll uh, walk you through it on the air or before the show On tomorrow. the air. Let's do, it yeah. now. Let's do it right now. I don't want to have a whole day, a whole 24 hours well, with this wallpaper on there, okay? Get, get to like where you're somebody... looking at it. And the I'm picture looking at too. it. Looks pretty uh, good to me. Right-click on it. Yeah. Uh, properties. Right. Then uh, go to desktop. Hit the desktop tab. Yeah. Over on the right side, you see where it says position? How about uh, prone? <laughs> yeah. It says center. Uh, center, tile, or stretch. You probably have it on stretch. No, I do not. I have it on center. How about stretch? <laughs> That'll put it all out of proportion. Oh, I don't want to do that. What about the other one? If you hit tile, it'll make a whole bunch of uh, multiple images. You might like that effect. Oh, I like that. That's good. Thank you very much. I Woo! Live, I live now we're to talking. Serve. Wow. Thank you so much. I don't think I'm uh, switching back. <laughs> okay. I, well, I'm just telling you right now, being the little pervert that I am. Hey, You'll listen, find I'm just somebody going through a period new. of life. Okay, I just had love. my 64th birthday. I'm on the verge of being a senior citizen, okay? Mm -hmm. My yes. excitement is playing slot machines at the uh, Racino, man. That's that's my excitement in life. So just uh, let me have a little bit of uh, fantasy there, okay? No just, problem. Just allow me a little bit of uh, latitude and my attitude. This too shall pass when you see I'm a sure new that. ass. I'm sure of that. 
Scientists for the first time have grown human heart valves using stem cells from the fluid that cushions babies in the womb. Uh-oh. Satan. Offering a revolutionary approach that may be used to repair defective hearts in the future. The idea is to create these new valves in the lab while the pregnancy progresses and have them ready to implant in a baby with heart defects after it's born. You know, I watched, I finally figured out why so many guys hate women like poison. Because I watched Fatal Attraction again, was on a cable last night. Uh huh. Glenn Close. Sure. She is what men hate about women. Why, why can't you just give it up without all the drama? Relentless, hateful, nasty, crazy just, bitch. Just because we have sex with you, that doesn't mean that we actually like you. Right. Not even a little bit. Right. The Swiss experiment follows recent successes at growing bladders and blood vessels and suggests that people may one day be able to grow their own replacement heart parts, in some cases, even before they're born. How do you like that? Excellent. What are you doing in the uh, lab over there? I'm growing a uh, replacement heart. It's one of several sci-fi tissue engineering advances that could lead to homegrown heart valves for infants and adults that are more durable and effective than artificial or cadaver valves. This may open up a whole new therapy concept of the treatment of congenital heart defects that Dr. Simon Horstrup, a University of Zurich scientist, led the work which was presented Wednesday at the American Heart Association Conference. He's from Zurich. He's Schweitz. Not Schwartz, Schweitz. Also at the meeting, well, actually, he sounds like he's uh, Horstrup. Doesn't that sound like uh, Swiss, or, uh, not Swiss, Swedish, whatever he is. He's a guy. Also at the meeting, Japanese researchers said they had grown new heart sounds Dutch to me. New heart valves in rabbits using cells from the animal's own tissue. I sure hope they didn't use the rabbit from uh, Fatal Attraction, the one that was boiling on the stove. Maybe maybe she was just make, being nice and making the family dinner. That's the all. Biggest maybe. Games, the best talent. Maybe it was Bill Rogers. But well, was a white rabbit, wasn't it? Yeah. Bush doesn't care about black people. Well, I never thought I'd find the kind of ride that I've been tooling around in today. Now it's a classic set of wheels fixed up the way a brother would like it. Now with the clean and shiny and the trim is cold and it dies under my seat, I got a can of liquid cherry, yo. Aw, baby. Coconut, granada, cherry, cherry, and me, baby blue. Aw, baby. Shiny little velvet little smelly machine took the suspension out, so I bounced down the road in a pimp daddy super fly way. Now with the hard to stop, no big deal, someday I'll get around to fixing the brakes. A 1979 Mount Paul Catalina, she's so looking fine, now it's my baby Cadillac. Aw, oh, baby, coconut, granada, cherry, cherry, and me, baby, please, stop, baby. Shiny little, velvet little, smelly machine, yo. I got my windows down on a hot summer day, cause the AC don't work no way. The sweaty crush with all seats starts to smell, it gets the dusty working overtime. And on my back seat you'll find a shiny ground that smell like lilacs, my carpet shiny too, cause I'll be washing it with armor roll. Oh, baby. Open the granada, cherry, cherry, and be, baby, blue. Oh, baby. Microscopic wheels going over speed bumps ain't too smooth. Ah, baby. Brush my law interior, you'll be fancy to me, baby. Ah, baby. Hey, 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 hey. 20 past noon at 560 WQM. Happy Thursday to you, man. We got the Mad Dog coming up at 2 o'clock and then the Humper and the Panther stuff. All kinds of good crap for you. Eddie K from Vegas after the Panther game. What a tough assignment. So guess who's got egg on their face today, Josh, speaking of your Florida Marlins? Who's that? You see who the National League Manager of the Year was chosen yesterday? Yes, I did. The fired Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi of your Florida Marlins, who then, of course, after the fabulous job he did of making them into a contender for a wild card spot, uh, got fired at it. Because the Marlins are a bunch of hard asses, and because Jeffrey Lurie and David Sampson, between the two of them put together, they got an IQ, uh, IQ the size of Joe Girardi's thumbnail. That's why. 
Thanks again for that wallpaper, George. That was a great idea. I never would have known how to do that in a million years. Well, there you go. That's what I'm here I for. I know how to do it. It's just a question of getting hold of it. <laughs> 1355 in the pool. I think we got a real shot today at 1500. That would be really something on a Thursday. I don't know. How do you feel about dessert? Sounds great. And of course, you'll have to wait till tomorrow. But boy, we're going to be bringing in tubs of ice cream again from Jackson's with them footlongs. And mm. woo! Man, I, I'd be dead if I were there. I'd really be dead. I just can't handle all that extra food. Ted Rawl writes when it's democratic. Like every day as if it was your, it says live every day as if it were your last. It's good advice, modified for politicians. Tr- treat every term in office as if it were your last. <coughs> I'm getting choked up about it. Republicans get political existentialism. When they campaign for office, they promise to be uniters, not dividers. Once they win an election, however, talk of bipartisanship promptly sails out the window. They freeze out the Democrats, elected representatives and constituents alike. Rather than compromise to accommodate the millions who voted against them, Republicans play to their right-wing base, racists and Christi- Christianists. Oh, I like that. That's even better than Jesus Christers. Christianists. Jesus Christ. Errs. <laughs> the GOP belligerently promise, promotes the most extremist items on its legislative wish list by declaring their victory to be a broad manifesto for radical change and wholesale rejection of the other side. They nominate judges whose conservatism is far to the right of the average Republican. Sure, they want to unite the country by forcing everyone to go along with what they want. Back in December 2000, recalls Lincoln Chafee, a Republican senator from Rhode Island after one of the closest elections in our nation's history, Vice President-elect Dick Cheney was the guest at a weekly luncheon meeting of a small group of centrist Republicans. Many people expected Bush would receive 48% of the vote and had been anointed after a controversial Supreme Court decision to halt the recount to make good on his campaign promises to reach out to Democrats in a spirit of bipartisanship, but Cheney had something else in mind. I was startled to hear the Vice President dismiss suggestions of compromise and instead emphasize an aggressively partisan agenda that included significant tax cuts, the abandonment of international agreements, and a muscular unilateral policy. Cheney and Bush understood that they might have only one four-year term to accomplish their goals. Knowing that they might never get another chance, they insulated themselves with a staff of like-minded ideologues and got to work at remaking America in their image. Drawing on bluster and hubris, they bullied Democrats into going along with the transfer of the federal tax burden from the rich to the middle class. Next, they skillfully exploited Americans' fear and anger following the 9-11 attacks to attack Afghanistan and Iraq. By 2004, they had eliminated civil liberties that citizens of Western countries had enjoyed for hundreds of years, emasculating Congress and the courts to create a unified executive form of government. Most of the changes carried out by Bush's neocons during his first term, new tax rates, USA Patriot Act, two wars, pulling out of the Geneva Conventions, torture, domestic eavesdropping, will probably remain in force for decades. Their strategy of running roughshod over the Democrats worked. It helps to enjoy the complicity of the media. Whenever Republicans win an election, mainstream pundits cite the results as proof that the American people have handed them a mandate to do whatever they want. When Reagan won in 80, Newsweek hailed his triumph as an idea whose time had come, arousing voter confidence in him and his politics, and posited that the results spelled nearly certain death for liberal causes. When Republicans picked up seats in the 94 midterm elections, House Speaker Newt Gingrich drew upon media support to stampede Clinton into a year-long co-presidency resulting in welfare reform and free trade pacts. When is a win not a win? When it's democratic. When a majority of Americans cast votes for the Democrats, the results are invariably interpreted by the media as the public desire for moderation and bipartisanship rather than some radical left-wing agenda. Democrats are told to abandon their campaign promises and ignore their liberal base. The pain and divisiveness of the Republican rule passed must be heralded by big-hearted and soft-headed Democrats. Democrats don't get mandates. The double standard isn't new. For all the records it broke time editorialized in 96, Bill Clinton's 49 to 41% win was a victory for studied modesty, for a willingness to swallow his pride, to preserve his power, embrace his enemies to steal their ideas, and march into history as the first two-term Democrat since FDR, not with great leaps forward, but one baby step at a time. It couldn't be clearer if they'd spelled it out letter for letter. Voters elected a moderate Democrat president to carry out a moderate Republican agenda, clearly. For the first time since 94, Democrats find themselves in control of both houses of Congress. They picked up 28 seats in the House and six in the Senate, a stunning sweep considering that congressional redistricting has made it more difficult to one-seat incumbents. But the fact that a lot more Americans voted Democratic than Republican, that Bush's approval rating is at a record low 31 percent, doesn't mean much to the official media or, it seems, to the winning Democratic candidates. 
Times post-election cover story was called Why the Center is the Place to Be. The incoming freshman representatives reported the New York Times, House organ of the Clinton-style centrist Democrats, in its lead story on November 12th, said they were given a rare opportunity by voters, many of them independents and Republicans, who are tired of the partisanship and gridlock in Washington. Now they say they have to produce to find a bipartisan consensus to avoid the ideological wars that have so dominated Congress in recent years, to be pragmatist and to change the tone of Washington after a sharply partisan campaign. They've set a bad example in not working with us, incoming Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, dead man in a suit, said to the Republicans, we're not going to follow that example. Belch, it says, <laughs> the fools already are running for re-election. And it goes on. There's more to it, but that's enough. Ted Rawl. He's great. Man. And so, is, uh, so are his cartoons. Like I said, good man. No Brady Quinn, but he's a good man. What if Ted Rawl shaves his uh, armpits? No, I'll ask him next time I see him. Yeah, see if he shaves the hair around the edges of his Rectum. ass. 1,369 votes. We might get to 1,500, but I think it'll be a close shave. <laughs> the biggest names, the best talent. This is Neil Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. The best. Absolutely. Itchy nipples. Hey, what causes that itchy nipples? Like a biting that itchy nipples. If it's a scratch on their sensitive, this is an awful way to live. Friends, wool and knocker toppers. Somebody should call Crime Stoppers. Wonder if I have Ebola. Itchy, scratchy areola. Rubbing against my Oh, holy hell, my nipples hurt. What affliction has come over me? Like an ant hill on my chest. Something bad has made a nest. On my poor innocent man boobie. You my have. Look at that. Steny Hoyer chosen as incoming House Majority Leader over uh, John Murtha. I think Nancy's going to be a little peeled about that. Who's Steny? Immediately after that vote happened, even the people who were most concerned about this, they are all trying to use the U word, Heidi, unity, are trying to put this behind them. I think the U word is... Un Believable. Yeah. But nevertheless. There is a senior Wences in drag. Dana Bash. Little tiny video. Anyway, Andrew Bard Schmuckler, who writes on The Smirking Chimp, uh, decided to hold off publishing it until after the midterm elections. Which is to say, I wrote this before John Kerry handed the Rovians their opportunity to score points with his clumsily handled joke. I expect, therefore, there's even less need than there was when I wrote this to point out Kerry's shortcomings as a standard bearer for 2008. In any event, here's what he wrote back in October. Andrew Bard Schmuckler on his blog. You know Andrew Bard Schmuckler? I do know. I wonder if he knows Wynn Schuler with that great bar cheese in Marshall, Michigan. Still haven't had it, have you? Have you ever had that uh, bar cheese in a crock? In a, in a crock? In a crock. No. Like Let's a crock see. pot. What is this? God bless you, love Jesus, and a howdy W. It's a late birthday card. Oh, isn't that cute? El Diablo yes, Duty with uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's cute. Okay, thanks very much. Whoever that's from. A lot of cute artwork. He says there appeared on Google News on October 22nd an article called Obama versus Clinton versus Kerry in 08, and to that I say, none of the above. The leader America now desperately needs must have undeniable integrity and therefore the moral authority to speak to Americans about how we must repair the damage the Bushites have done. Hillary Clinton doesn't occupy such a space in the American mind, and in part because through her political conduct, she's shown herself to be more of a maneuverer than one who comes from conviction. We need a leader who has clear vision, a solid understanding, and the courage and strength to go up against the forces of evil that have done so much damage to this country. John Kerry was handed the responsibility of providing that clarity and depth of understanding and courage and strength when he was the standard bearer in that enormously important election of 2004. We wouldn't have Roberts and Alito on the bench. We wouldn't be practicing torture and passing legislation to abolish much of the Bill of Rights. Maybe we would have started doing something in Iraq better than staying a course that's proved disastrous. 
But John Kerry showed himself in that race to be confused and weak. Too confused and weak to defend himself when the liars attacked, and too confused and weak to tell the American people what was really at stake in that election. We need a leader who has a thorough understanding of the system of government that he's trying to make work of the larger world in which he'll be guiding the world's greatest power and trying to repair very serious damage in the in international system and of the host of other issues facing the country and the history of how they got that way. But Barack Obama is a newcomer to that world, promising enough but not seasoned enough to be able to lead what needs to be more than the usual status quo presidency. None of those three, say I, as leader we need to elect in 2008, say I, he says, say I, Andrew Bart Schmuckler. I would look again at Gore, he says. Gore has those strengths. Some he lacked in 2000, but he's shown that he's come into his own in the year since then. There is now a solidity and authoritative quality to Gore that wasn't there in 2000. He's shown he can speak about these Bushites with prophetic power. How do you like that? With power he didn't have before. How dare they drag the good name of the United States of America through the mud of Saddam Hussein's torture prison? He may not be charismatic, but he's shown clarity and strength. He's shown integrity, and he was also the last person high in the public world to act with any nobility when he set aside his personal feelings after the Supreme Court decision and yielded to the ostensible rule of law in a gracious way. He showed himself even then to be so much better than these Bushites who never put anything ahead of seeking advantage in their pursuit of power. And I've lately been hearing rumblings of a possibility that Bill Moyers might be willing to run. He's another person who might have the right stuff for this historical moment, says Andrew Bard. Schmuckler. He's given Gore credit for uh, being gracious and stepping aside and letting these people come in and do all yeah. the crap that they did. Uh -huh. I give him the blame for it, him and Kerry both That's of them, right. for being a couple of wimps. Well, there's Nancy Pelosi, that bitch. To be the Speaker hey, of hey, the hey, House. Hey, speak this, okay, honey? She looks like Nancy Reagan on a bad day Woman with speaker, a little red dress. I'm just absolutely delighted that we have a Democratic speaker oh, right. and a Democratic majority. Yeah. You know something, like I told you before, these people are only a buffer. That's all they are. Take two and call us in the morning. If you're suffering, take buffering. That's all I can tell you. If you think these people are the great hope for the future, man, no. you are deluding yourself. Go take a couple more pills. Take about, uh, eat the whole bottle of buffering while you're at it. Up, up. We got any faxes from anybody who was at Gulfstream yesterday for the inaugural the debut of slot machines in Florida? As life goes on, nobody died because there were slot machines at Gulfstream yesterday. I'm sure that some people yeah, died how between do you yesterday know? and today. But not because of those machines, I don't think. Unless, of course, the Lord is just waiting. You know how he works in mysterious ways. Maybe he's laying mm -hmm. in wait to punish us for those evil one-armed bandits. The Frito Bandito. See, I started thinking about food again. I said Frito. I don't like Fritos or Cheetos. I don't like that crap. See, if you're going to be eating carbs, eat quality carbs. You know, like ice cream, dark chocolate oh, okay. is good for your heart. Eat a couple of pounds of dark chocolate, man. Your heart will be great. Your heart good won't plan. be dark. What? I said good plan. Yeah. I'm going to start right now. You just cool it until tomorrow. And then they're going to bring in all that good stuff. In it. And then you can, like, uh, what you do is you take some of those little, what do they bring the hot fudge and butterscotch in? Like little um, tubs, little, uh, you know, dishes with lids. With lids on them. So mm -hmm. you stick those and you nuke them in the microwave and you make the hot fudge nice and really hot. Mm -hmm. See, I tell you, I mean, hot fudge is okay even if it's cold when you're like a sugar addict like I am. And I'm really, I'm addicted to Brady Quinn and sugar. He's sweet. But nevertheless, see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And you heat it up in the microwave, and then you pour that. You ladle that over your uh, rocky road or whatever they bring. Oh, my God. I'm getting to a head rush for. just thinking about it. To die from and to die for. I'm not eating no ice cream today. I'm not going to let you talk me into it again. Don't do it. The worst influence of my life, George Rodriguez, always pushing the food. Just like when he started talking about that delectable pizza yesterday. <laughs> oh. Ew. Oh. I'm still nauseous from it. Are you really? Ugh. The Brooklyn Ugh. pizza from uh, slimy, wet, from Domino's. lip, greasy. Really? Other than that, was it pretty uh, good though? It was like a wet cracker with a with ketchup on it. Uh, ooh. Twenty one till one at five sixty WQM, your food station for the new millennium, man. We're we're hungry over here. We're just hungry. We're just growing boys. That's what we are. Yeah. Sideways. Wider every day. You watch Josh, man. He's gonna balloon up and be a cow. I can, I can just tell. It's not. No I way. Hate to say that. I beg your pardon? Not going to happen. It's going to happen, I can tell. Yeah, it'll Ooh, happen. Not going to happen. You're shoveling all happen. that stuff down there, and then tomorrow you're probably going to eat like a gallon of ice cream. You're damn mm -hmm. right. 
Oh, you know what I found? I shouldn't tell you this. Last week, remember I was talking about um, Kit Kat ice cream? Yeah. Nestle's makes it in quartz. Oh, great. <laughs> what? Maybe they can make it in coffin size and you can just climb in. <laughs> Yeah, bury me with like uh -huh. a couple of half gallons of... It wasn't very sure, good. You could just eat yourself to death near. and then, uh, they won't have to move the carcass. Very good. Of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a thing or two. I'm going to like uh, release all my bodily uh, fluids just at the very ass end there. I mean, right at the Where end. else would you do it? Well, who knows? <laughs> Maybe out of my ears. <laughs> There's Denny Hoyer, the incoming House Majority Leader. That Nancy Pelosi has been selected to lead the Congress, the House of Representatives, not just the Democratic Party, but the... Yeah, he's sucking up big time now, but she hates him like poison. Who now ever heard of a guy named Steny anyway? Huh? Steny, what, what kind of a name is that? He's 67 years old, she's 66. Why can't we have some living and breathing people in there in charge of government instead of these old farts, you know, these lifelong politicians? It's a conspiracy. You just, you just know they all got their, uh, their hand in the cookie jar and the ice cream uh, mug, oh, yeah. jug. They got their hands on the jugs. I'm going to go back and look at that wallpaper again. No, no, seriously, let me let me just say this to you. In all seriousness, all setting aside all of this sexual uh, falderall. Yeah, right. If he's shaving it, man, he is doing one pristine job. That it, uh, unless they're airbrushing the picture. Of Listen, course. if well, that too, and the computer <coughs> digitization. But if somebody was going to take a picture of uh, of one's chest, you're going to make sure that it looks nice before the picture. Well, how the hell do you know who took that picture? No, I'm saying if, I, if, if you know that you're going for a photo shoot and they're going to be shooting your chest, yeah, you're going to make sure that it looks nice and neat. It didn't look to me like he was shooting on his chest. But at any rate, now when's that picture coming up? I'll be out sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I won't be here. By the way, I Googled Peter North. My goodness. Now, do you think Peter North was shaving his uh, chest and bodily parts? I, I dare not. He speculate. sure as hell wasn't shaving his uh, 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 privates. I'll tell you that. Depends on what year we're talking about. Well, you talk to Peter about it. Neil, God. Real American a holes. Real American a holes. We salute you, Mr. Peep Show Booth Mopper Upper. Mr. Peep Show Booth Mopper. -upper. You were dismissed from your last job as a high school custodian for leering at students in the girls' locker room. Not a bright idea now. But now it seems you found your true calling as you punched the clock at Main Street Adult Book and Video. Give me 20 token jam. Night after night, you march into those private viewing booths onto the gills with cleaning solvent, scouring pads, and blind ambition. Pop, pop, for Pee Wee Herman, yeah. Sure, there are awkward moments when you accidentally walk in on a client. But that's okay, because Mr. Smith knows you're there to make his viewing experience cleaner, safer, and most importantly, clear. So we salute you, Mr. Peep Show Booth Mopper Upper, your paper towels, your bum knee, and your scraper. You are a real American a hole. 1248, 12 to 1 at 560. WQM, we got 14 every two votes on the poll. Oh, 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 oh. What were you saying? Rectum. Yeah, that too. Oh, oh, oh. How do you like that? 1402. Which means we're going to make 1500. I can, I can smell it already. Can't you smell it? Mmm. Mmm. A bus carrying senior citizens from the Golden Lakes neighborhood was broadsided today. Oy. This morning by a speedy Reuter truck sending 12 people to the hospital. The bus, which is operated by the Jewish Community Center, Oy. was in the 7800 block of Okeechobee Boulevard in West Palm Beach when it was struck about 9.30 this morning. Seven people were taken to Palms West Hospital, five transported to St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach. Two of them carried in by the Trauma Hawk helicopter. I'm sure we'll have updates from the QM News Department about this later on in the day. <laughs> QM News Department. Yeah, there we go. All the news that's unfit to print. JCC spokesman Scott Bernard said the center operates the bus for the Golden Lake Senior Community. See, you know, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Like I'm at Woodbine yesterday, and I'm going to go take a leak, and I put the cup on my chair and my jacket on the you know back of the seat so nobody takes my machine. And I waddle off to go take a leak, and there's you know there's people of all ages, there are many young people there, which you would be shocked. You think that only old farts like me go there, but nevertheless. 
There's plenty of oldsters, you know, and there's this old guy who looked about 100 years old, waddles by me, he's barely moving. And I'm thinking to myself, what an old fart, you know, and then, and then I stopped and I realized, but then yeah, again, yeah. I'm an old fart. Maybe you know? it was just a mirror walking by. That could have been it. I just don't think I'm ever going to be that. You know, I mean, I could be wrong. Right. Well, you know, maybe in two weeks I'll need a walker with wheels on it, I don't know, and a tank of oxygen. Keep eating that ice cream, you won't be. I'm not eating any ice cream, okay? So a week or two ago, I found a quart of uh, Nestle's uh, Kit Kat. Mm -hmm. Should have been called Schmidt Schmatt. Uh -huh. It wasn't very good. It was nothing like the uh, Kit Kat I had at Fallsview, which means this next coming weekend, I better go to uh, Niagara Falls. Not to gamble, just eat ice cream. It's a little bus route to the store and grocery shopping. But I said it wasn't a JCC event. Just a little trip to the store. He said the bus driver, a JCC employee, was fine, but could not immediately provide his name. Juan Lopez, another guy whose name ends in a Z, the owner of Speedy Rooter in West Palm Beach, was not immediately available for comment. An employee confirmed the truck driver was upset, but fine. He was upset, but well, you'd be upset, too. Yeah. If you slammed into a bunch of a busload of old farts. Witnesses said the bus was eastbound on Okeechobee, may have run a red light. The bus appeared to be turning from Golden uh, Golden Lakes to head west in Okeechobee. Firefighters had to cut off the left side of the bus to free out some of the passengers, okay, to get some of the oxygen and walkers out of there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm thinking about old farts, and then I realized, who the hell are you thinking about? It's just like calling people fat, you know, like Kirstie Alley. Did I ever play the Kirstie Alley bit? Not today. No, not the old one. I'm talking about this one. Live in Chicago. Oprah. Many months of sweat and tears have gone into what is about to happen right here on this stage. Kirstie Alley. She's coming out in front of a live audience in a bikini. Are you sure you want to do this? Bring it! <laughs> you know, I'm 55 years old. I am deeply sorry about that. Body parts going like blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. See, it was worth it. Speaking of right-wing idiots, you know Glenn Beck? Another uh, Tampa reject, Glenn Beck, mm -hmm. rhymes with Dreck. He's on headline news now. In fact, Keith Olbermann selected him last night as yesterday's worst person in the world. He picked him yesterday as the worst person in the world. Yeah. He does that every day if you watch your countdown, which you don't even watch it. I do sometimes. Toward the end of the show, every day he picks the worst, which it's usually Bill O'Reilly or somebody like that. But this, this was just as good. On the November 14th edition of his CNN headline news program, Glenn Beck interviewed Representative-elect Keith Ellison, Democrat of Minnesota, who became the first Muslim ever elected to Congress on November 7th, and asked Ellison if he could have five minutes here where we're just politically incorrect, and I play the cards up on the table. After Ellison agreed, the unctuous right-wing Beck said, I've been nervous about this interview with you because what I feel like saying is, Sir, prove to me that you're not working with our enemies. Back at it, I'm not accusing you of being an enemy, but that's the way I feel, and I think a lot of Americans will feel that way. As Media Matters for America has noted, Beck previously warned that if Muslims and Arabs don't act now by stepping up to the plate to condemn terrorism, they'll be looking through a razor wire fence at the West and declare that Muslims who've sat on your frickin' hands the whole time, rather than lining up to shoot the bad Muslims in the head, will face dire consequences. They got excerpts from the November 14 edition of CNN Headline News' Glenn Dreck, a Beck show. Back history was made last Tuesday when Democrat Keith Ellison got elected to Congress representing the great state of Minnesota. Well, not really unusual that Minnesota would elect a Democrat. What is noteworthy is that Keith is the first Muslim to be elected to the House of Representatives. He joins us now. Congratulations, sir. Ellison, how are you doing, Glenn? Glad to be here. Beck, thank you. I'll tell you, may, I, may we have five minutes here where we're just politically incorrect and I play the cards face up on the table? Ellison, go there. Beck, okay, no offense, and I know Muslims, I like Muslims, I've been to mosques, I really don't believe that Islam is a religion of evil, I, you know, I think it's being hijacked, quite frankly. With that being said, you are a Democrat, you are saying, let's cut and run, and I have to tell you, I've been nervous about this interview with you, because what I feel like saying, sir, sir, prove to me that you're not working with our enemies, and I know you're not, I'm not accusing you of being an enemy, but that's the way I feel, and I think a lot of Americans will feel that way. Ellison, well, let me tell you, the people of the 5th Congressional District know that I have a deep love and affection for my country. I, there's no one who's more patriotic than I am, and so you know I don't need to prove my patriotic stripes. Beck, I understand that. I'm not asking you to. I'm wondering if you see that. You come from a district that's heavily immigrant with Somalians, and I think it's wonderful, honestly. I think it's a really good sign that you are. You could be an icon to show Europe. This is the way you integrate into a country. I think these Somalians coming out and voting is a very good thing. Ellison, I'd agree with you. How do you like that? Prove to me that you're not an enemy of the country because you're a Muslim. You're not on the other side. 
you're into that cut and run crap. How you're working, working, sleeping with the enemy, just like Julia Roberts. That's a great movie, by the way. Yeah, it was. And another uh, nice surprise ending. Yeah. A refreshing surprise. Well, how do you like that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's, uh, I would say Match Point is better. Sleeping with oh, yeah. the enemy is yeah. great, but Match Point right. is just sensational. Yes, it was. Would you agree, Josh? Yes, I would. Wow. Now, what was the other movie before that that you said that uh, had something to do with, like, a messy divorce or something like that? Well, I said that you've, you were into the uh, the uh, affair movies in Tristan and Isolde because that's what's going on in that movie as well. I need to finish watching it. You haven't watched the ending of Tristan and Isolde? I haven't finished well, in the it. end... Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. It, it ain't no match point. Attention. That's for damn sure. No, it's, not, it's definitely not as good as match point. In fact, uh, James Franco has disappeared on my um, wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? That's mm -hmm. how fickle I am. Especially after I've seen him in that, uh, what was that awful TV series that I uh, was sent away for and it was horrendous? Uh, and then I didn't need to see that something either. Something with the school. Uh, uh, Spider-Man. School days. But uh, forgetting about that. School just days. Spider Which I love Spider-Man 1 and 2, but the bottom line is he was just scrawny and uh, he didn't look like too much to me in there. You'd have to admit he looked like he bu bulked up a little bit in Tristan and his old. And of course, shaved that was his with chest. The 80, huh? And shaved his chest. Did he really? I don't recall, but <laughs> no. I'm glad that you noticed that. I think I'll have to watch that again <laughs> to find out. I think it was Nair. Well, he's Jewish, I'll tell you that, so he's probably a little on the hairy side. Yeah. Jews tend to be hairy. So I've seen. Well, it's a Mediterranean thing. Italians, Greeks, Jews. Mm -hmm. Who am I leaving out? Spaniards. Spaniards. Oh, lots of hairy Spaniards. Sure and lots enough. of uh, smooth, hairless uh, Spaniards, too, as a matter of fact. we got all kinds up there in uh, Hiberia. How about Cubans? Uh huh. It depends on uh, their stock. Yeah. Depends on who's stuffing their stocking. Is that what you're right. saying? Depends and what, on how and what they're stuffing into it. Uh, yeah. The biggest names, the best talent. Welcome. This is Neil Rogers. Hey, Sports Radio 560 QAM. Oh boy, it's the one to two hour. First, I was so cocky. I knew Bush had my back. I was having lots of fun running things there in Iraq. Now, W has let me know that I am no longer his ace. I'm disgraced. And I've lost my parking space. So now I can't. Asked to resign. Told to shove my reputation in that place where the sun don't shine. I would have quit a year ago if I knew what was waiting for me. I would have booked a reservation... To go hunting with Cheney. Go on now. Throw me out the door. Just see if I care. Pretending Bush is smart was such a chore. A week ago he loved me. Now he tells me goodbye. He's replacing me with some creepy CIA guy. But I won't cry. I will survive. I've got my social security. Hey, wait, that, that hasn't run dry. I'll write a book. I'm very smart. Or I'll go to work at Walmart. But I will survive. I will survive. Hey, I wonder if Arby's needs a Secretary of Defense. I think that uh, him and Walmart would be a match made in heaven, don't you? Indeed. I haven't watched that DVD yet. Now, did you see it? Walmart, uh, whatever the hell that is? No. I'm so behind on stuff, as you know. I'll be damned. The watching, that is. So here's the, uh, here's the story behind the story. Democrats elect Hoyer as new majority leader. Steny Hoyer was elected House Majority Leader this morning, defeating Speaker-designate Nancy Pelosi's choice, Representative John Murtha. Well, Steny Hoyer is 67. Murtha must be 110. Hoyer won the number two leadership job easily, 149 to 86. But the showdown divided the Democrat House caucus only a week after its party won a majority of seats in the Congress that begins meeting in January and prompted numerous complaints that Pelosi and her allies used strong-arm tactics and threats to try to elect Murtha to the job. She's, all, she's already pissing people off. Democrats this morning unanimously chose Pelosi to be the Speaker of the House. She'll be the first woman to hold that post. See, man, called her at a point. They're already writing about that. She ain't no condom Lisa, thank God. Mirtha, 74. See, I told you, older than dust. Former Marine. I'll tell you, I'm still going to be here doing the show when I'm 74. Ten years. I'm signing a ten-year extension. Okay. I'm extending it. Mirtha, 74. Former Marine. <laughs> and people are running like crazy. 
Former Marine who was among the first on Capitol Hill to call for U.S. troop withdrawal from Iraq may have heard his own chances last night or Tuesday night when he derided the Democrats' ethics and lobbying package before saying he'll push for its passage anyway out of deference to Pelosi. His statement at a gathering of conservative Blue Dog Democrats was cited by Horbacher's as further proof that Murtha's controversial ethics record disqualifies him to lead the party in a new political era. He said that that bill was a piece of crap. We had that earlier, and I can still remember it. remember reading it. Mm-hmm. Almost like I was there when it happened. Pelosi's aggressive intervention on behalf of Murtha baffled and angered many Democrats who said she unnecessarily put her reputation on the line out of misplaced loyalty to a friend and because of a long-standing feud with Hoyer, the minority whip. Pelosi pushed Martha's candidacy at social events and private meetings and with incoming freshman Democrats. They were called to her office to discuss committee assignments, only to hear first that she needed Martha in order to be an effective leader. She was pushing it. Pushing too hard, honey. Remember that song by the Seeds, You're Pushing Too Hard? You don't want me to play that again, do you? Oh, you're not going to play it again, are you? Yeah. Well, don't wait for it. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I had to put something. I had to move something over here anyway. I don't have it. Oh. On the eve of the vote, which is conducted by secret ballot, Hoyer maintained the public support of most incoming committee chairmen, including influential liberals such as Representatives Barney Barney Frank of Massachusetts and Maxine Waters of California, most conservative blue dogs, and 21 of the 40 or so freshmen. But Murtha had a sizable contingent from the Appropriations Committee and the Pennsylvania delegation, as well as uh, Pelosi's closest supporters. After her endorsement, Pelosi continued to push Murtha unabashedly. I wonder if she knows Dana Bash. Dana Bash. Oh, my goodness. I will tell you this. If you wonder what the the mental problem with mental health in America is, just turn on the tube, man. Tube! Television is uh, making people crazy. Don't you think? I'm, I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit, but I don't think so. I don't know about crazy. It's making them stupid. And crazy, uninformed. stupid, and crazy. Like that. Crazy. They put these people on there. I, w- I wonder if your girlfriend is on yet. It's, it's 1 o'clock. Isn't that when uh, you have to be... Peace Let be with you. Again. Yes. yes, and I know as I've felt... Well, there's Denny Hoyer. Who, no, that ain't Denny Hoyer. Who's that guy? With you. And also Happy Thanksgiving with you. next week. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. And we're following another breaking story. At isn't that Nora O'Donnell? On NBC. It ain't my girlfriend. It ain't Rita Cosby. There's no fun. you got to admit, she, she is at least a little bit of fun from a uh, humor standpoint. If you have a really Rita? great sense of humor. The CIA has acknowledged for the first time the existence of two classified documents, including a directive signed by President Bush, that have guided the agency's interrogation and detention of terrorism suspects. Oh, my God. The CIA referred to the documents and letters sent Friday from the agency's Associate General Counsel, John McPherson, to Lawrence for, for the uh, ACLU. The contents of the documents were not revealed, but one of them is a directive signed by President Bush granting the CIA the authority to set up detention facilities outside the U.S. and outlining interrogation methods that may be used against detainees. The ACLU said based on its review of published accounts. The second document, according to the group, has adjusted to Department legal analysis specifying interrogation methods that the CIA may use against top al-Qaeda members. ACLU lawyers said they'll urge public disclosure of the contents of the documents. We intend to press for release of both of these documents. Jamil Jaffer, a lawyer for the group, said in a statement, if Bush and the Justice Department authorized the CIA to torture prisoners, the public has a right to know. Don't we think? Absolutely. Yes. A spokesman for the CIA declined to discuss the matter for obvious reasons. The documents had been sought by the ACLU in a, f- a suit filed in New York Federal Court under the Freedom of Information Act. The suit has previously led to the disclosure of thousands of documents from the Pentagon, the FBI, the Justice Department, and other agencies. In the past, CIA lawyers have sought... Can I, can I just tell you one thing about all of this? Okay. It's all bullshit. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that what they're claiming is bullshit. It's all a bunch of crap. They're going to do whatever mm-hmm. the hell they want That's to right. do. That's right. That's the way it works in the real world, okay? All you idealists out there, I'm not suggesting that you ought to be cynical like me, crusty old and cynical, but uh, just enjoy your life. That's all I can tell you. Just go find a good machine, a good sex partner, whatever the hell you, uh, turns you on. Go uh, steal some money. Do whatever you want. But don't expect these bastards ever going to do anything honest or that makes any sense. It's not going to happen, man. It's not going to happen. They lie like hell. We know we worked for Greg Reed for a long time. We know what lying is all about. The fact that he's back in that building over at Power down the hall there, it's just, just amazing to me. It's astonishing. The fact that Larry King and the Humper have, uh, are not Internet uh, literate. I mean, even I was able to put that nice uh, wallpaper on my uh, desktop there. Look at that. 
There's two Brady Quinns side by side, and they look very much very like identical twins. Hmm. Side by side. One's chest is a little bit smoother than the other one. One's got like a little <laughs> follicle. Well, you missed a spot, sweetheart. You missed a spot. Let me get it for you. How about this spot over here? You know who's really great, but uh, nobody pays any serious attention to him because he's short? That's how it is, George. You short people. Uh, I know all about it. They ignore short people, especially short people with bad hair pieces. In an interview with Amy Goodman of Democracy Now!, former presidential candidate, Representative Dennis Kucinich, he always says all the right things. He's got a huge pair of balls, especially for a little guy. But he has that problem. Is that nobody no, nobody pays any attention to him. Nobody takes him uh, seriously. And you want to know why? Oh, he's a little guy, kind of funny looking. That's it. Right. Dennis Kucinich called for an end to American financial support of the war effort in Iraq and for immediate troop withdrawal, like now, before we have any more dead people for based on lies, for nothing. We need to get out, said Kucinich, responding to a comment by a member of a conservative think tank. Think tank my ass. And we need to get out uh, through cutting off funds. Once we determine to cut off funds, the money is in the pipeline for an orderly withdrawal, he said. He went on, until you cut off funds, the administration is free to keep the troops there. As the president has stated again and again he's going to do, the White House is prepared to stay in Iraq through the end of its term, until hell freezes over, till the end of time. Kucinich insisted that Democrats have to come up with a new direction for the Iraq quagmire, and that new direction must be out. It has to be UN in, U.S. out, to which I would say... Absolutely correct, sir. In the same interview, another former Democratic presidential candidate and Senator George McGovern had this to say when asked about parallels between the situation in Iraq and the war in Vietnam, which was raging during McGovern's 72 campaign for the White House against Dick Nixon. Well, they were saying the same thing they're saying about Iraq. We were told during all those long years when I and others were trying to terminate our military involvement in Vietnam, an intervention that the chief art architects now say was a dreadful mistake. And they said that if we pulled out, maybe it was a mistake to go in, but if we pulled out, there would be slaughter of people in Vietnam of indescribable dimensions, that Ho Chi Minh and his people would just slaughter everybody in the country that disagreed with them. We also were told that the countries next door would start toppling into communism if we left Vietnam. None of that happened. There was no great bloodbath inside Vietnam. The Vietnamese became our friends almost immediately after we took our army out of their country. They assisted us in trying to locate missing American soldiers. They were ready for diplomatic relations with us. We have no problem with Vietnam today, and as a matter of fact, none of the countries next door toppled into communism. So those were the scare tactics that were used to keep us in Vietnam for about 20 years. The president has said recently that maybe we have to stay until the year 2010 in Iraq. That's another four years, during which time we'll probably kill several thousand more American troops, and the terror now going on inside Iraq that began when we invaded the country will only get worse. No country in the long term wants a foreign army lodged in their country. Nobody wants to be occupado, baby. Nobody wants to be occupied. Additional excerpts from the interview, a full transcript, which is available here on this uh, thing, follow. And I'm not going to read it. Kucinich does say, I think the American people responded a week ago. They asked for a new direction. They're fed up with a war that's based on lies. They're fed up with seeing our brave men and women die in a cause that wasn't correctly stated by the administration. They're fed up with having America separated from the world community. They're looking for a new vision, one that includes America as a nation among nations, not a nation against nations, one that takes the real power of our ingenuity and creativity to create alternative energy so we don't pursue oil as a matter of national security, using the military to grab oil. Americans are looking for a new direction. You go, little Dennis, before somebody starts steps on you and squashes you like a gnat. Little people. I think Randy Newman had a good point, even though I can't stand Randy Newman. What did he ever do to you? I just, I just don't like Randy Newman. I don't like him. I don't think he's funny. I just, uh, I don't know. You like him? Well, you like him because you're short. I don't dislike him. Oh, there's Short People by Randy Newman. I just can't, I don't, can't deal with him. He reminds, me of Bill song, Maher. But... he reminds me a little of Bill Maher on a bad day. I heard Sorry, he was a good Randy, guy. I take that back. That was a real shot. I heard he was a good tipper. He'll pick up a check at dinner every now and again. Yeah. I heard Brady Quinn's a good tipper, too. Big tips. God, can you believe that? That was that was like magic. That was like when that alarm went off right after I did that uh, feedback routine like that. I don't want to do it again. It's piercing. Remember Billy Pierce, great uh, left-hander for the White Sox? Who? I was thinking about the great Jewish athletes the other day, Hank Greenberg. I wonder if he was kind of Seth Greenberg and Sandy Koufax and Joel Horland and Al Rosen. What about, uh, what's his name, Sean Green? I wouldn't say he's a great player, would you, Josh? He had a couple of really good years. I'd but say he's, he's a, a good player. I good player, yeah. great. Not a great player, though. No. He's not in the category where, like Sandy Koufax and Joel Horland. Those really great Jews. 1,445. <laughs> that would be a good poll to take someday. Who is the greatest Jew of all time? Who's the greatest uh, gay of all time? Who's the greatest black of all time? Right, wouldn't that be good? Sure. Einstein. 
Is the greatest Jew of all time? I don't know. I'm just throwing Jew names out there, you know. What about Menasha Skolnick? Oops. The biggest names, the best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Hey, Neil. This is Randy West. And as per our phone conversation, I talked to Peter North the other day. He tells me your real name is Neil Down, and he still ain't interested. This here's the story about a woman we don't take kindly to. She joined the Senate, a position she kind of slid into. Oh, my God. Her man, Bill, ran the country in 1992. Boy, she'd love to be president, too. She works in the old Big Apple. Always thinking about living in that White House castle. In four years, she'll have an election to tackle. Good Lord, don't let Hillary run. 2008. Good Lord, don't let Hillary run. No, no. Who wants another Clinton? No, no. If she wins, we're finished and done. Absolutely. So good Lord, don't let Hillary run. 118, boy, I got a really savory story. I hope you finished lunch, everybody. Yeah, I, I think it's safely past lunch time for most, isn't it? Not really. Sure. Oh, wait till this comes out. One moment, please. You're going to puke your guts out. A Chinese military surgeon had eight Chinese citizens killed to supply a single patient with a new kidney. Why do you need eight of them? Said former Canadian Secretary of State for Asia, David Kilgore, on November 14. He spoke as a special guest on the Asian Human Rights Forum in uh, Warsaw on day two of a five-day program. The incredible thing is the doctor would go down the names of sheets of paper looking for blood types and tissues and so on, and the patients would, um, something names on the list, see uh, the margins chopped off. The doctor would then go away and come back with organs, said Kilgore. While conducting research in Asia, Kilgore interviewed a now 35-year-old man, name and nationality withheld, who received a kidney transplant at Shanghai Number 1 Hospital in 2003. The man said that a surgeon was Dr. Tan Jianming, secretary of the Chinese Research Society of Dialysis and Transplantation. Dr. Tan also held post in a number of Chinese military and civilian hospitals. The patient suffered from an antibody condition that made it difficult to find a suitable kidney. Over an eight-day period, four separate kidneys were brought to him uh, and uh, rejected. They tried them, but they didn't work. When none of these worked, three months later, he tried another four, the last of which was a fit. It was a fit. This one worked. Dr. Tan told the man explicitly these organs came from executed Chinese prisoners and that at least some of the organs have been harvested secretly against the donor's wishes. (laughs) All right. I'm certain that at least some of these were Falun Gong practitioners who never went near a court, who were never convicted of anything, said Kilgore. How do you like that? Not that the Chinese do barbaric things or anything like that, or that they eat dog and right. cat and horse and horse around. They like mm-hmm. to horse around, and they're hairless and smooth and horny as hell. 1,450, i got news for you. You don't make a billion people without being horny as hell. Amen. A lot of screwing going on. Sure. What else me? you got to do? Eat rice. Mm-hmm. And... Make nice. 1,456 votes on the poll. Th- and we'll only do those top two. That's where the battle is, and it's getting, it's not close. Throughout American history, which group has been treated the worst, like poison, like r- rotten to the, uh, treated like crap? The Indians, 617, and blacks, 504. Jews have moved over a triple digits anyway, 109. 109 Jews, but... Uh, 594, 504 for black, 617 for the Indians. Indians got a lick, man. They got it made. Now that they got all them casinos going, you know? Yeah. Selling the white man them cancer sticks so we can like get all those diseases, lung cancer, all those uh, emphysema and bronchial diseases, you know? All you kids out there, put down those faggots, okay? Don't start smoking those things, although LSMF, uh, LSMFT. What? Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Oh, does it? And Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Newports. And again, then there was always the picture of that really beautiful young couple in the, uh, in the woods smoking Salem. The, the suggestion being that if you smoked Salem, you would look like them and be screwing your brains out with some hot uh-huh. number. But nevertheless. Didn't work, did it? No. There was something that was smoking, but it wasn't necessarily your partner. 
the Bush administration trying to push through judicial nominations before Republicans lose control of the Senate in January officially resubmitted six nominees deemed by Democrats too conservative for the federal bench. They just won't give it up. Five nominees were the subject of an angry exchange in August when Democrats said their selection was a sop to the president's conservative base. A sop. The White House yesterday submitted Terrence Boyle of North Carolina and William James Haynes the Tooth of Virginia to the Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Richmond, Michael Brunson Wallace of Mississippi to the Fifth Circuit Court in New Orleans, Peter Kaiser of Maryland to the District of Columbia Circuit, and William Jerry Myers the Third and Norman Randy Smith both of Idaho for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco. Everyone except Kaiser has generated intense opposition from Democrats. Under Senate rules, the nominations must be resubmitted after Congress takes an extended break, as was the case this year for the 2006 election. Isn't Congress always on an extended break? Yes. Democrats have asked the president to be bipartisan, but this is a clear slap in the face at our request that Senator Chuck Schumer, New York, a member of the Judiciary Committee, for the sake of the country, we hope this is an aberration because the president feels he must placate his hard right base rather than an indication of things to come. Senator John Cornyn, Republican of uh, Texas, vocal backer of many Bush's judicial picks, said he thought it would be very tough to get the nominees through the Senate during the lame duck session. But he added, hope springs eternal. Cornyn said judicial nominees will test the Democrats' stated desire to run the Senate with greater bipartisanship. We'll see whether now that they're in a majority status, if we're going to have ideological litmus tests for judges, Cornyn said. The president's picks for the federal bench have sparked angry debate in the Senate. The incoming majority leader, Democrat Harry Reid of Nevada, once threatened to filibuster Boyle's nomination if it came to the full Senate. Haynes was an architect of the Bush administration's eventually abandoned policy on the treatment of terrorism detainees. He later told the Senate panel that reversing the policy was the right thing to do. Just like when Moe backed off demanding that they fire your ass, he did the right thing. Remember that? Mighty white of it. Yeah. I did the right thing. Oh, my God. What an evil doer. Bush this week also sent several non-judicial nominees to the Senate. One was Kenneth Y. Tomlinson, renominated as chairman of the Broadcasting Board of Governors, an agency that directs U.S. overseas broadcasts. His nomination is bogged down because allegations of misconduct. A report released in August by the State Department's Inspector General said Tomlinson misused government funds for two years as the board chairman. He disputed the allegations. Just what we need is more crooks in there. Come on, uh, W. I'm sure you can find lots more of your buddy crooks to stick in there before it's too damn late. You lunatic, you maniac, you evil to are you. And like I said, Cornish Talpin. Sit and scream and get all bent out of shape. Now, I think you'll like tomorrow's poll, which I usually don't tell you, but I, I may have left somebody off so far. And since I did screw up and leave Indians off today, thanks to George for getting that on there. They're leading by a mile. No charge. Which ultra-rich person do you despise the most? Remember I threatened to do this? I talked about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Here's the list of people I got so far. Ted Turner... Wayne Heisinga, Oprah, Bill Gates, George Steinbrenner, Rupert Murdoch, Donald Trump, and Warren Buffett. That's what I got so far. I'd leave any ultra-rich people off there. We're not talking about people that got like, you know, a million dollars. We're talking about really, really very wealthy people. How about Merv Griffin? Nobody nobody thinks about him anymore, do they? Hey, Merv! I don't. You fairy! Do you? What do you no. think? What? Well, that's because you watch Jeopardy. What about it? I know he oh. invented it, but... Uh, did he also invent it? Wheel of Fortune? Yes, he did. I think so. Wheel of Torture. By the way, Van is 87 and Pat Sajak's 96. Remember that guy that called in that day? Well, you're wrong. You're giving out bad information. I don't give a crap, okay? Who cares how old she is? She doesn't do a damn thing. She ought to kiss the ground every day. To get paid for turning the freaking letters. She didn't even do anything. She doesn't even turn them at all. That's just a mirage. Just like in Vegas, man. It's just a mirage. That's all it is. You know how she touches the thing and it turns blue? That's what uh, Pat said. He said she touches it and it turns blue. Mm-hmm. Or purple. Oh, are you starting again with that Moe Howard David thing? I'm obsessed. <laughs> You're obsessed. I apologize. I apologize profusely for all the uh, Brady Quinn talk. Oh, now let's see. Who are they playing this week, Notre Dame? Why do I ask Josh? You don't know nothing about sports. Who are they know, playing? I don't know nothing about Notre Dame. Well, why not? I'm not looking at shirtless pictures of the quarterback. I hate them like poison, man. What is that? Yeah, hell, you're not. You're the one that's putting them on there. Because you told me to. Well, if I told you to put some naked guy on there, would you do it? Notre Dame fighting. I, I hate them like poison, as you know, but I sure root for them when the... Although, you know, the interesting thing, who did they lose to a couple of weeks ago? UCLA or USC, whoever they lost to. Remember that? Uh, they did lose, didn't they? No. They didn't? They, when they pulled that game out? 
Yeah. I, I mean, they haven't played USC yet. So, Who do they play, UCLA? No, I don't think so. The hell they didn't, man. You Not better yet. learn your fighting Irish football, mister, because you sure as hell don't know it. We're going to turn your ass into the freaking bridge tender. At any rate, I don't know who the hell they're playing. I, I can't stand them anyway, okay? It's just me being a fag again, you know, rooting for Notre Dame because the quarterback looks hot, you know? I mean, that's just stupid. That's childish. That's embarrassing. That's humiliating. That'd be like you watching some ladies' tennis match, and just because some hot chick is on there playing, you're rooting for her to win. Now, you wouldn't do that, would you? Yeah, Anna Kornikova. Well, like I said, Anna's Kornikova. Boy, and I'll tell you one thing. It's a good thing she don't play too good. She don't look too good, and she don't play too good. And she's got legs like tree trunks. The biggest names, the best talent. Hey, Anna. You Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. Who's going to give Ricky a blow? Silly ass Brits, man. Sir Paul McCartney. Sir, this one we talked about the other day. Still, it just makes me gag. Sir, my ass. I wonder if he ever been surfing in the Big Sur. Nope. 1,476 votes. We need 24 and 27 minutes to get to 1,500. We got that licked. I am confidence is extraordinarily high, don't you think? Absolutely. Either that or maybe Georgia is extremely high. Not yet. <coughs> You will be when that ice cream shows up tomorrow. And you better not be oogling too much about it on the air, or that's going to set me off for the whole weekend. It would be really right. bad. We'll eat very quietly. I'll be out going out and getting a tub of Nestle's turtle. I haven't had any of that in a long time. Man. One ticket sold in the city of Frostproof matched all six lotto numbers to win a jackpot of $30 million. About 30 man. Lottery official said today. Don't you hate that when some yahoo in a place like Frostproof? Where the hell is what Frostproof? I don't know. It's right up 27. About oh, my God. Hour, on, on our way to, like, Tampa? Um, way before that. I mean, it's it's an hour away, north, on 27. By the lake? Is it a mistake on the lake? Is it by Avon Park? Okay. I wonder if that German uh, restaurant's still around at Avon Park as you're driving up 27. A total of 108 tickets match five numbers to win $6,454.50 each. 7,000 plus tickets match four numbers for $80.50. And 151,000 tickets match three numbers for five bucks. You only get five, five bucks for three numbers out of six? Here you get ten bucks for three numbers and two plus the bonus you get five bucks. Well, what a ripoff. Nice going, fat ass Jeffster, you idiot, you lunatic. What a ripoff. Three numbers gets only five bucks in the Florida Lotto. It's one of the worst bets. Take your money to Gulfstream instead, okay? Take it to Pompano and plunge your guts out. I'm Brucey e. Ranger, who's a constant danger. Or Wally Hennessy. Maybe Wally won't get lost, eh? You having a big year, right, Wally? Good. Good luck to you. I was thinking before, you know, that 30 million lotto winner, wouldn't it be something if one of our listeners won 30 million in the lotto? Especially some like maybe old lady who's like 89 years old, something like that? Yeah. yeah. And then she's like, you know, somebody who's been listening to me for a long time. About 30, 30 years. years. Now, what would you think it would be an appropriate amount? I'd say a million a year for 30 years sounds like 30 million to me. Okay, I'll take Just it. sign the thing over, okay, honey? And, of course, it's kind of stupid saying that because in Florida you don't get the money. What if you're like 80 years old and you win the lottery for $20 million and they're going to pay you with an annuity until you're like 150 years old? You're never going to see the money. Or, or like, uh, if you want to settle for the smaller amount and get it all in one lump, we'll give you like 40 bucks, you know. What a joke. 
one of the biggest cons, one of the worst ripoffs. The way it's done is what galls my ass, you know? At mm-hmm. least here, if you win a lottery, they write you a check. Cash money, baby, on the barrel head. No tax, no annuity, no games, no BS. They ought to take that fat-ass governor of yours and string his ass up right out there in the middle of Miami Lakes. Somewhere. Don't you think it would be a good idea? I'll watch. And the rest of them, too. String them up. Piece of turd. And his dysfunctional daughter and his smuggling wife and his carousing son. And then the other son there who thinks, uh, you know, he wants to be president of Mexico. Is that George P.? You ever see George P.? Not lately. Unless it was me. Hey, Josh, ever see George P.? Yeah, a couple times. 1,480 votes on the poll, man. We're going to make that 1,500. we got uh, 24 minutes to go. we got a long way to go. Too long, if you ask me. I'm fixing to go get me some nice lunch. You fun? I'm fixing to go get a nice lunch today. Something like low carb. Get my blood sugar down to a nice level under 800. Throughout American history, which group has been treated the worst? The worst. Although I do like my bratwurst, I'll tell you that. I think I'm going to start doing the show from Berlin. Mm. 1,482 votes. Indians, 630. Blacks, 512. Jews, 109. Those are the only three groups in double and triple digits. Gays, only 68. Maybe we can move our frequency to like 680. Gay, 68. Would that be a great floor man? Do you know that once upon a time, I never told you this, I don't think, Dick Casper, remember my boss and mentor Dick Casper, rest in peace? Mm-hmm. He wanted to buy a radio station in San Francisco and turn it into an all-gay radio station, a talk station. And I was going to be like the main anchor. I was going to be like the pivot man. Wow. Didn't happen, though. Women, 67. I hate this poll, 57. A mere 3.8%. Pretty good for us with these picky poll people out there. Nothing worse than a picky poll person. Mexicans, 20. And Catholics, 19. And Catholic Mexicans, of course. That's an, 1482. I think it's a shoe in for 1483. Look at that. The votes are pouring in by the ones. We're a shoe in for 1500. Is that impressive or what? There's Don't something. forget the Panthers host the Montreal Canadiens, the Frogs tonight. Take your anti frog repellent when you go to the Macarena. All those obnoxious <coughs> Montreal folks will be there. Nasty. They smell bad. They wear those Speedos. Oh, my God. Parley will get lost. Parley will go home. That's what you should tell them when the big busloads of French Canadians start pulling on there by the arena. So how many more years do you think the Panthers are going to be in existence? I'm saying maybe two. Maybe we can bring the Strikers back. What the hell was his name? The coach. You asking me? Yeah. He did those promos for us, those drop-ins. Ray Hudson? That was the Fusion. Ray Hudson. Oh, it was the Fusion? I thought he was also the coach of the uh, Hudson. The coach, of the coach of the Hudson. <laughs> this is Ray Hudson, Miami Fusion's head coach. Whatever. And I love the queen of South Florida, Neil Rogers. Should be in Buckingham Palace, but we'll keep him here. Maybe I'm suffering from a little, con- a little confusion. Yeah. Buckingham Palace. The biggest names, the best talent. This is Neil Rogers, Sports Radio 560, QAM. Oh, well, man, what's up with your guy from a sporker?
60 WQM, we got Mr. Mad Dog at 2 o'clock. Panther game tonight after the Humper. Preview at 7 o'clock. Panthers and the Canadians at 7.30. And the Eddie Kaplan Show in Vegas right after Panthers hockey. 1496. Where the hell was Columbus in 1496? I don't know. Probably in Vegas. Well, by that time, he had all of Queen Isabella's money. There's nothing like getting some Queen's money, you know what? With its cell processor engine, Blu-ray DVD drive, and beefy hard drive, the PlayStation 3 is unquestionably a powerhouse of video game system. And forget about Elmo. This is the item consumers will be sparring over as the holidays get closer, writes Chris Morris on CNNMoney.com. What was that? Oh, that was the uh, sparring sound effect. Oh, they were sparring? But cut through the hype and the desire for the newest, flashiest gadget, the product is not as compelling as it might seem, he says. Uh Uh-oh. The PS3, for all its power, feels incomplete at launch, and that could leave some consumers who have shelled out five or six hundred bucks for the system, depending on the configuration they choose, feeling put out. In other words, p- 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 put out, P.O., pissed off. Why couldn't he just say pissed off as opposed to put out, huh? Some kind mm. of a pusey? The potential for greatness is certainly there, but there are fundamental mistakes in execution that prove annoying. Oh, by the way, did we ever get our Internet straightened out because nobody ever bothered to tell no. me or tell no. us? No, The answer is no. We did not? Not. So, in other words, all day long we've been uh, people trying to listen online and it's yes. all messed up? Yes. It sounds like this again? Any Worse. 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 Well, what's it doing? Well, I can't hear it. Well, how do you know that? There, there's feedback, and it's breaking up, and it just sounds... It's inaudible. That's what uh, they're saying on the fax and on the email and... Uh, Still? Pony Express. Still. I think Clarence stuck his finger in it. Stuck something in there. We have 1,500 votes. How do you like that? Oh! In spite of your ass, Clarence, in spite of the fact that somebody messed up our Internet stream that was so beautiful yesterday and pristine and clean for the old queen. And what do we got today? Crap. Typical QAM, baby. Typical QAM. A technical disaster. An accident waiting to happen. Anyway, getting back to this thing. The potential for greatness is certainly there, but there are fundamental mistakes in execution that prove annoying. Take the initial user experience, for example. When you bought a PlayStation 2, it was a pretty simple process. You paid the store, took the PS2 home, plugged it in, and started playing. Things aren't so simple this time. Once you plugged in and configured your PS3, you have to update the system software. Some, but not all, launch games will include that system update, which means the process will take five minutes or so. If not, you'll download and install the upgrade from the Internet, as I did. This method takes more than ten minutes. It's frustrating, especially having spent this much money. The money does buy something. The PS3 is the first system to fulfill the promise of being a true digital centerpiece in the living room. There's little you can't do with it. Watch high-definition movies, listen to music, surf the Internet, chat with friends, and actually play games. Surf the Internet, Larry. Uh-huh. You press Punching buttons. Little, uh, buttons but yeah. yeah. Press buttons. Press uh, Uranus. Those system updates allow Sony to add functionality down the road. The PSP portable gaming system Sony introduced last year has benefited greatly from system upgrades, and there's every reason to believe the PS3 will as well, but they're still a pain for day one users. The dashboard menu structure is similar to the PSPs. Navigating between the areas that let you launch a game, a movie, or music, along with the Sony network, the online service which lets you download trailers and buy add-ons for the games, is all pretty easy. The only part that could cause confusion for some is the settings field. If nothing else, Sony is thorough in letting you choose how you want to set up your PS3. But there's such a thing as too thorough. Quick, do you want your audio CD output frequency to be 48 kilohertz or 44.1? You get the point. 44.1. Well, who the hell knows that? Smarty Pants. Who Mr. Doesn't? Smarty Pants over here showing off again. No, that's, uh, that's the CD bit, bit rate. Graphically, the PS3 is a tour de force. No, not better than Microsoft's Xbox yet, but you quickly sense the greater potential of the PS3. It'll ultimately be a question of how long it takes developers to learn to exploit what the system has to offer. If you have a high-definition set, you're certainly in for a treat. And if you're one of the few to have a TV with 1080 high-def resolution, which I do, you'll be in heaven. All right. I better get one right. Should I go out and get a uh, PS3? Yeah, just send it to me if you want. 1080p. <laughs> I'll send you something in a bag, okay? Yeah. 
And that's when the chuds came at me. 1080p is the PS3's sweet spot. It's the most detailed video available today, and PS3 games uh, plan to make the most of it. Launch title NBA 07 is the best initial example, with detail as fine as the pores on a player's skin, but accept no, expect no visual detail to be minor. Details as fine as the pores on a player's skin. You could tell Brady Quinn's religion when you're watching a Notre Dame game. That's how clear it's going to be. Maybe you could have a terrible if it's, uh, if it's shaved or nared. His chest? Oh, yeah. For the majority of owners, though, those who only have a regular TV, said it's a slightly different story. The PS3 still looks good, but not awe-inspiring. It's a good thing that Josh has a, 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 a HD set for right. when you buy him this for the holidays. <laughs> Ultimately, it's a matter of the software. Resistance Fall of Man, for instance, looks fine in regular resolution. Need for Speed, Carbon, not so much. Controlling games is pretty close to what PlayStation veterans are used to. The major shift this time is Sony's included a motion center in its controller, which has been redubbed the Six Axis. In NBA 07, for instance, twisting the controller will let you juke around an opposing player. Let you juke around. The problem is that the motion doesn't feel natural here as it does with the Nintendo Wii. Perhaps as developers get more used to the feature, they'll be able to incorporate it better into their games. Initially, though, you get the impression they were caught off guard when the feature was announced and rushed to find some way to include it. Gone also is the rumble effect from the controller, an omission that has upset many Sony loyalists. Personally, I miss the shaking. Don't you miss the shaking? No, I, I, I don't like the shaking. The feeling of a slight rumble in your hands as you fired a virtual weapon out of the fun. God, a slight rumble in your hands. Or As for the much touted Blu-ray, shut up. As for the much touted Blu-ray display, it's a nice addition, but it's almost immaterial if you don't have a top-of-the-line TV set. For standard TV owners, it's just a player for the more expensive movies and likely won't appeal. But it could be an ace up the PS3 sleeve in the years to come. An ace in a hole, like we say in America, you're my ace in a hole. Online gaming, a big battleground for the current generation, unfortunately couldn't be tested yet. Microsoft has big momentum with its widely celebrated Xbox Live system, which could be difficult to overtake, even though the PS3 won't charge users for online play, as Microsoft, of course, does, because Bill Gates is evil. Mm. Compounding these shortcomings has been the PS3's unimpressive launch, including a tepid line of games and an embarrassing snafu that caused problems with its much-touted backward compatibility or the ability to play old games. But the PS3 is far from a bad machine, man. It has the potential to be all the PS2 was and more. And remember, the console wars aren't won or lost at launch. They're marathons that usually don't start to shake out for two or three years after all the new systems are on the market. To, contact, to, uh, to count Sony out this early would be foolish, she says. The question is, if you're somehow able to find a PlayStation 3 on a store shelf this year, is it worth buying one? Sadly, the answer is not yet. Not yet, Josh. I agree. Not the yet. system is too expensive for what most people get out of it, and the initial slate of games does not offer enough innovation or thrills to justify the purchase. Wait till the prices drop to 100 or even 200 bucks, and until there are a few more good games available before you consider making a pledge. Wait till the price goes down, man. Wait until you, it's affordable. And then uh, George will buy you one for the holidays. Right, I'll buy him two. Aye. There you go. One for each room. Well, buy him a whole bunch of them because he moves around so much, you know? That's right. I'll buy him a you PlayStation know which and a Wii. He's going to be hanging in with his uh, roommate. Buy him one for the uh, bedroom, too, okay? 1,504 votes on the poll, man. So the streaming, I'm depressed about that. because other, well, Eric other says that, that, it's, uh, that it's okay now lately. Who said? Eric. Yeah. As we said that, he says that it uh, has cleared up recently, but it's been bad uh, a lot on and off today. Well, we apologize for that. Not that we have any control over it or have anything to do with it, and we're at the mercy of uh, a bunch of lunkheads, you know. Oh, there's O.J. speaking to Lunkheads. Waiter, Ron Gold. Oh, do we need to see him again? And Fred Goldman, man, you know, I feel for him and the Browns and all of that, but enough already, right? Are we, am I right about that? Yeah. Because the more they keep schlepping him around, the more people are going to watch this stupid-ass thing. There's Fred Goldman again with Larry. Sir, I, I, thorough... Look it up on the Internet, Larry. Punch her a couple of buttons. <laughs> and that mustache, he's starting to remind me a little bit of John Bolton, kind of revolting. But anyway. Okay, I'm going to uh, dispense with playing the bit I was going to play there because I had it back time perfectly. It was going to be, if it was like one of those five-second rejoins, you could have put the little hand and the big hand together right there at 2 o'clock. But you can't do it now because well, I don't know where. See, I think uh, Josh is getting paid under the table to sabotage the end of the listen, show. Listen, we only have two of those short yeah. ones. He's getting something under the and table. I run them all day. And, uh, yeah, he's getting squeezed under the table. Probably Clarence is squeezing it under the table. It wouldn't be the first time. Anyway, here's the poll result, and then we'll get the hell out of here, okay? I wasn't going to run over again. I don't want to start getting in the habit like they used to do on that freaking worst team. Oh, well, we got a very important guest on the phone today, and he, well, yeah, we had to run over. Right. Because the future of the human race was edge, hanging on the edge of their uh, sports interview crap. 
1,507 votes on the poll, only two that really count. Throughout American history, which group has been treated worst? Indian, 643. Blacks, black folks, dark, 519. Bye, bye, bye! <laughs>